Hello. There we go. It helps when you plug things in. All right. Um, it looks like everything is good except, yeah, the sizing is totally wrong for Terra Mystica. So let's get in. Uh, we are practicing for the Fire 2 Open game that I have tomorrow. And we got a hell of a cool table. Uh, we got Bowser Hugs, Super Zarni, and Halai. And uh, I need to refresh the page because everything looks ridiculous. And I need to throw stream announcements out. Uh, do, do, do. Boom. All right, that's all done. Hello, welcome, chat. Probably would have joined if it wasn't going to be stream, but chat needs you more. No, that's totally fair. Look, it's like people don't have to join anyhow. And we, I got a table after not too long. It was a little scary because nobody, uh, nobody was committing. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, everything else is good. Uh, we got giants. Gotta love giants. I'm just I'll, honestly I'm up for anything exciting. Uh, that's mostly my plan. Um, I haven't been watching all the Fire Two Open games, but I've been seeing that there's been like some Earth One rushes. I mean, I probably shouldn't tell my opponents too much, but frankly, my opponent should not be surprised to learn that I almost refuse on principle to Earth One rush. Um, it's almost guaranteed whatever I'm going to bid on and do tomorrow is going to be some sort of economic game because that's the only thing I really love and enjoy. And to be fair, I mean, I think I think Saturday's match was won by the guy that didn't take Earth 1 anyhow, right? Like, I... I exactly! Earth 1 didn't even win. So that's... I, I don't... I'm not going to support all this. Uh, mermaids and Giants. Uh, what do we got? I haven't even paid attention. We got Dwellings, Big Building, Temple... Town, big building, trading post. A little bit of an awkward track. We got coins on the past tile, though. All the coins are there. All the scoring is there. The spade is there. We're missing the priest. We're missing temp ship. Temp ship missing is a little bit iffy. Priest missing also makes shipping a little iffy. Like, a little harder to get. Um, but in general, this, like, the past tiles are promoting, like, a ton of points. The track itself is meh, but we would have been fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Preach? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not taking Earth 1 tomorrow. Like, I, I, I might eventually take Earth 1. Sorry, to, to be clear, but the chance that I, like, the chance that my first two actions of the game are trading post Temple Earth 1 is, like, nil. Um, the chance that I take Earth 1 in round 1 is also pretty low. Maybe there's a weird world where I get forced into it, but, uh, anyhow, sorry, what should I pick here? Uh, anything that can put out a bunch of dwellings early is good. Um... Color wheel says that brown could be in. Ugh, ugh. Do I put in halflings here and just say, can we prove halflings can do things? Even, yeah, screw it. Let's just throw in halflings. Do halflings make enough sense? I don't know, but I'm throwing them in instead of cultists. Uh, are all F2O games going to be on this map? Yes, they are. They fix it for each tournament. Yes, lots of coins on the past tiles. Indeed. Um... First time on lakes. I, I barely play on lakes. Um, I, I really do. I played an F2O practice match before the qualifiers. I streamed that game, and it's on my YouTube, I think. It was really cool. Like, I did double temple nomads in round one into digging into round six towns. Like, I got away with my three-town game plan. Like, it, I won that, but it was also, like, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just did Terra Mystica things. Do we have landscapes? No, no landscapes. No landscapes in F2O. I, I, I think that's correct, but... Ratings-wise, I should crush. I'm a chump. I'll first pick... Halflings are pretty good. Yeah, it seems. What is this strange game? This this strange game's term Mystica. I don't it's not a feast for own, it's not Agricola. Who knows what this is? It's lakes, it's landscapes, we have income on, we have like it's it's baffling. 
Uh, I nailed it last stream on Lakes. Yeah, the Lakes Nomads. It was very good. That can't be right. I don't stream TM. I will eventually stream some more TM. I might do some arena this season and just take the random draws. I might do some, but God, I, yeah, I'm, look, I have been addicted to playing Agricola, and now a Feast for Odin's distracting me a little too, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'll probably do. I probably will get some more Terra Mystic in, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm playing, I'm playing Terra Mystic tomorrow, so uh, trying to just get one little refresher game here in. Uh, should Halflings take power for double spin? Uh, well, I normally wouldn't, but given it's a dwelling round one, meh, maybe you could convince me, right? Because they're not going to get spayed otherwise. But it is a dwelling round, so you take this just so you get double dig, because nobody else will get it then. Ah, maybe, maybe they should take power for double spin. I'm not convinced that's what I would do. I might just take the big building tile and go double temple but we'll see uh we get witches intriguing uh i have heard witches are not great on this map but you most of you know me that i am a witch's lover at heart uh loki uh i'm gonna give him a bone i'll be right back All right, you think witches are both bad and underrated. Okay, so that's slightly interesting. You think people you think people rat on them too hard. You think they're not that awful. That is reasonable. Uh, okay, I honestly have no real clue where people are starting. Let's see. Giants, mermaids, halflings. Halflings? Mermaids have to go here. That's about the only thing I know about this map. Mermaids go here for sure. Mermaids probably go here, but then witches go here. Like, which is... Uh, gross. Um, what can I do for sure in this game and not hate myself? Uh, bid one on halflings. It's brown on this map with no color enabler. And a million past tiles. It's fine. These factions suck? Excellent. I'm, f I'm fine with a bunch of sucky. You'd probably build halflings because brown is broken. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, <laughs> Eli is crazy. Yeah, I am i don't feel like it's been mermaids. I also don't... God, do I hate giants? I mean, giants... I guess the track's really awkward for giants because you don't... You gotta open stronghold still anyhow, and it's gonna go probably spade either power or big building, power or big building, so giants are just getting, like, coins... Yeah, it's a little awkward for them, too. It's a Scrappy raid. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, hello, Scrappy Kid. Thanks much for the raid. Uh, we are streaming Terra Mystica. Practicing for the Fire 2 Open tournament tomorrow. Uh, normally, I stream... Uh, lately, I've been streaming a lot more Agricola. But, yeah, I mostly stream Terra Mystica and Agricola, so welcome all. Hope your last game went well. Aren't Giants just bad, though? Uh, giants are... Not great, but I don't think they're bad. None of these factions. I don't think. See, the thing is, I agree with my chat thus far. I don't think any of these. I don't think any of these factions are good. I don't think anything here is like great. I don't think there's like. I don't think there's any like faction that's clearly gonna have like a great game plan. This is definitely a bit ugly. Um. So. Uh, you think mermaids start h six instead of e four? I feel like mermaids have to start E4, right? Not starting E4 as mermaids seems absolutely awful. Like, if you don't start E4 as mermaids, don't you just get murdered? Like, in terms of connecting around the map? I have no idea for sure, though. You played Arnak. Came second. Oh, yeah, that's a nice... That sounds like a good game. That's cool. Uh, If you go to two ship and take the rest... Oh, okay, fair enough. You feel like I instigated that a little with Halflings? I feel like Halflings are actually not the best. I think Halflings are the best faction that got thrown in here. I mean, Halai just went to 19 on them, and I think that's reasonable. Like, I, I was I supposed to throw in something even worse? Like, I could have thrown in Cultists and made the auction absolutely miserable from my understanding. So, yeah, Halflings are the clear best. Like, 
Oh, cultists would have been way better, but too good. I don't think I started this. I think giants getting thrown in first seat is a pretty clear indication that this game was never exactly going to be a bunch of top tier factions battling it out on this map. Like the more I look at this track, giants are, I mean, giants can go stronghold into a dwelling, probably hit a temple, a town, but like, it's, I don't think it's great. I don't think it was ever going to be great. I, I honestly get a bit half leads one more. Uh, I'm probably overbidding, but also they're the only faction I feel like has a for sure good things going on. But yeah, you think giants and witches both might be better? It's possible. Cultist could be a zero. Yeah. All right. Can mermaids get away with just taking coins and taking priest as their first action this game? I guess, yeah, if mermaids, like, start... I guess they get to see where witches place. And as long as mermaids protect, like, just go to two ship and build these hexes in round one. And then they can also just start, like, here. Although this is maybe not a great starting hex if mermaids are here or if witches are here. Yeah, God, I don't think mermaids are great here, right? Like... The thing I hate about mermaids on this map, too, is, like, you get these starting hexes, and you get to this hex, and then you just get nowhere. All the blues are in absolutely trash fire locations. Witches. Witches are starting with a spade, but their neighbor situation sucks. How much am I going to regret bidding witches here, though, in all reality? Like, witches that open, like, temple into stronghold? How actually bad can it be? For science, it's re it is it is bait. It is bait. But I'm going to it. D6 gets plenty of leech? Probably. Probably D6 gets leech. I don't know. Does it? You tell me. I don't understand where people start on this map or what they do. Who's building on C4? Giants with their stronghold? I build on C4 with my spade? I, I don't understand. I also don't know where witches towns are on this map is admittedly like part of the problem. Brown starts at D5. Yeah, I know Brown starts D5, but that, how much leech is that then? Sure, Brown upgrades on D5, but D6 is not exactly like a leech-filled hex, so I thought, whatever. Uh, Swarm lead's okay with landscape. You're not in love with blue on this map. Yeah. That's fair. Can we start at G3 and try some garbage with H5, H4? Uh, possibly, but that depends heavily on what Mermaids is actually doing and if they allow us to do that. And if we even get single spade. Like, do we get single dig? Maybe we get single dig. Eh, maybe not though. Like I, I, I really don't know. Like it's so hard. Like that's part of the problem of being in four seat. You, re I have really very little idea what my opponents are gonna do. Uh, but yeah. How about mermaids? Blah blah blah. You sir, we start D six G three fly to E seven. It's possibly sane. It might work. Um. The things I don't know for sure for witches is, is like if you actually get to go temple into big building. Temple into big building is like pretty reliant, I think, on getting the extra workers. Um, and I have no clue if witches are actually going to get those. But I'm willing to pay one more here and then figure some more. Uh, you think the thing about other maps is there's more spots? This map feels like the whole thing. Oh, this this whole thing is... T like, look, I, I don't like this map. Like, I'm going to repeat that, too. Like, I'm not a fan of this map. Um, I think I think this map is... Well, whatever. It's not... Again, I, I, I think there's generally too many high-tension spots. I think there's generally, like, slightly less leech. I think making towns is ha a little harder and more annoying. Like, I don't, I don't think any of that makes the game great i think fjords makes the game great i think having big land masses is great i think having lots of lakes is bad <laughs> that's what i've learned but um that's fine fjords is the best fjords i'm a big fan of fjords but you think you'd take giants at 30 before you'd bid mermaids uh yeah i'm pretty on board with that i don't think i'm touching mermaids i keep looking at mermaids and i'm really not totally convinced of what the game plan is giants i'm at least like eh Things, certain things are going to work. I don't know how great they're going to work, but it's okay. 
I to be fair, the other trick about giants is I don't really know where giants towns are or where giants starting spots are. Um, the other thing I don't love about giants is that I'm going to feel compelled to like take a worker's power action in round one. And that's always the bane of my existence. But like this probably gets a good enough amount of leech for giants is connection long term a problem for giants. You got to like blitz through these hexes, maybe like it's a lot of digs probably. Yeah, I don't know. You think mermaids have a nice round one? Mermaids can put out some dwellings, scoring pass. Giants start C3 plus blah, 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 blah. C3 plus E5, C7 occasionally. Yeah, okay, yeah, that was pretty much what I was looking at. That all makes sense. Witches should let you have C4. Maybe. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're playing with... No, we're playing halflings. Our 13 bit on halflings worked. Okay, well, fine. I'm playing halflings. Um, okay, then. Um, halflings it is. So, halflings. We're starting D5, because it is going to be the best lead checks on the map. Then... We figured out from there, but we start D5 always. It's just too much insane leech. Actually, well, Mermaids probably takes this before we get there, but I mean, like, there's there's maybe worlds where this turns into a sanctuary town or something anyhow, but even if this is just a temple that gets abandoned, I think it's fine. The other one feels like it goes here. I mean, I guess there's no neighbors here, but it feels like this is the expansion hex, or is it seriously you just start here? I don't know the answers to these deep questions either. B5 isn't awful. Oh, literally, you start here? Ugh. I don't feel good about B5. You like B5. Interesting. Oh, I'm not convinced 14... Or I'm not convinced half leads are better either. But that's what we got. I bid on the half leads. Wow, C2 for witches. Uh, wow, D6 is being left for mermaids. I did not anticipate these things. I mean, this is like a witch's town over here, I guess. But, uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know if that changes a hell of a lot, but it is interesting. Um, there's, like, nobody on this side of the map, then? So maybe it is G4? I mean, I'm gonna be able to ship to G4, though, right? There's, yeah, witches never take G4 is the thing. Like, although I'm going, if I want to go double temple, I might have to be on G4. Do I even want to go double temple? You think B5 and open double dig, and I secure D4, B4. Interesting. The double dig line is very not bad either. Yeah, the double dig line is very not bad. You like G4. G4 is fine if I go double temple. Mermaids can still get close to G5 pretty quickly. We have no idea where G5 is. Double dig is huge. So your guys' advice to me is I'm supposed to take the dumbest past town existence just to get double dig because I hate it. I tend to hate taking a past town just for double dig, but maybe you guys are going to convince me that it's fine. It certainly secures a hell of a lot of interesting territory if I start here and take double dig. It, like, really locks in a lot of things very rapidly. Um, sure. Sure, sure, sure. My instincts are generally good. Yeah, my instincts are generally good. I mean, the double temple line feels very fine, but it is a dwelling round. It's a dwelling round, and I will admit this stretch is incredibly alluring right here, too. Like, again, towns are annoying on this map, and I just secure this. Um, I might lose G5 doing this, though, because, like, the time I get to ship to G4 is going to be slow. Um, but I should be able to ship to G4 and then ship to, like, G6. Like, I I'm eventually going to be half leads and have plenty of digs, so I think it's fine. I might get double dig with another pass tile. I don't think I get double dig with another pass tile because I think I do think mermaids would take that. I mean, the fact that it's three points for mermaids makes it a lot more palatable. Um, 
I think. But do we ever make a town from D5? Probably not. D5's probably not a town, but the past towns are not very economically good. Well, sure, deranged, but I'm third seat. So, like, I'm now passing two workers up to somebody else. Um, I mean, like, if giants somehow get two workers, it's such a gift. Also, I am way more willing to just take six coins in round one than a lot of players. Like... I six coins is a totally a fine starting tile for a lot of factions. Like giants, I don't think are that hurt by starting six coins here. Like it's a little annoying, but like they just take a worker's power action and you move on. I like I don't know. Whatever. Again, it doesn't matter. We're doing this, so Uh, mermaids not want, want E3 with this. Six coins is never bad. Exactly, exactly. Uh, E, do, do, do. Okay. Uh, anyhow, the game plan then is going to be, uh, we're, we're double digging and our first action of the game are probably just dwelling, dwelling. So the other sad thing is we're kind of upgrading late. So all the other upgrades might happen early, but like locking up these hexes, and just getting to open Temple 3 Dwelling seems very good. Uh, Earth 2 is fine here. Fire 1 might be fine. Um, the Spade does get taken. We are going to just lock in Double Dig. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just locking in the Double Dig. I'm going to do it. Um, when I say 6 coins is 6 coins, yeah. So six coins admittedly doesn't help you in round one, but it it often helps you in round two if you're planning out your game for it. Like, I think giants a lot of times in round one try to take a seven coins power action instead of taking the workers power action if they can get workers elsewhere. Well, now I start with six coins and I get the workers elsewhere, like or I get the workers action. Like I think it's a I think it's a fair enough trade. I don't mind it. Uh, Giants did start C7, so yeah, I mean, like, this stretch of the map is just, like, completely open to me right now. I mean, Mermaids might still, like, take Priest first action. Uh, I, 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 like, Mermaids taking Priest early and trying to ship, oh, but shipping, see, they might lose H6. Yeah, this is, a, this is wild. It, actually, if Witches take H6, Witches just, like, lock up a Sanctuary Town here, and they lock a Bridge Town here, so Witches probably are gonna take H6, with their single dig. So G5 might be pretty protected for me. Like this stretch might like my expansion looks, yes, much cleaner than others. Although the, Oh, mermaids are getting B6 this way though. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What, a what, what this is, this, there's lots of craziness. You don't think mermaids should have gone E4. God. Yeah. That's interesting. Mermaids going no E4. Um, I have to double dig here. Uh, well, do I have to double dig here? Can't I upgrade and greed this out? No, I can't greed it out because if what as soon as giants upgrade, then I could get screwed if they go to stronghold. Well, but then they have no workers. Man, whatever. This this is wait, this is insane amounts of leech right here, anyhow, if I build this. Duh, whatever. This yeah, this is stupid leech. This is fine. This still gives me tons of leech. Do do do. We got there. We got there. We we it took it took a dumb second of us catching up to our terramistic instincts, but this is tons tons of leech. Which is very well up. Which is almost have to upgrade here, actually. So yeah, this this is absurd amounts of leech for me having these hexes too. That's the other benefit actually of this line. We're 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 gonna build tons of dwellings and get just absurd amount of leech. You would dig here as witches. Just dig H six. What are you digging as witches? F three becomes huge for witches. F three. Okay, something. Whatever. Do do do. Giants should all actually take four coins, you think? I would not take four coins to get an extra worker in round two. I'd much rather just take two coins now. Um You would dig H six and then I take H four from mermaids. Oh, you're saying as witches you can single dig H five, H four. Oh, yeah, yeah, which is single digit H5, H4 is kind of fun. Uh, anyhow, giants giants emerge. I'm going B4. I assume giants are going to take C4 then, probably. Um, but, yeah.
Welcome to the leech party. Indeed, indeed. F3 is the witch's connection hex long term. Ah, gotcha. We're worried about connection. That's great. Giants has to prioritize E5. Uh, the rest of you know what actually matters. Intr well, oh, long term. Yeah, Giants have to try. I see. So you guys, Giants should take D7 and get to E5? E5 feels like it's under zero threat this game. Who's taking E5? I mean, I am eventually, I guess, because I'm a jerk. But, like, I don't think Giants have any actual rush to E5. I do think, again, without temp shipping in the game, like, people upgrading shipping is going to be very good. Um, yeah. Also, I still haven't decided if this is a Fire 1 game or an Earth 2 game for me. Like, Earth 2 Halflings is always, like, pretty good. But Fire 1 can't be that bad, but... Witches goes three town, no connection. That's interesting, too. Our Chaos Magicians Misery. That's what people have told me, but I'm not as convinced that Chaos Magicians are Misery on this map. Yeah, they're pretty good here. Okay, see, that's that would be more of my instincts. Uh, what actually happened, by the way? Uh, mermaids took the priest action that I claimed they were going to. Okay, fine. Uh, I have to secure this because otherwise Giants can wreck me. I don't want to let Giants wreck me. Giants wrecking everything sounds awful. Uh, in most color matchups, they have problems. They're worse than Fire and Ice Fjords, but way better than base. Chaos Magicians are base are pretty fine. Oh, hi, Loki. You're bringing your bone. I can hold it for you. Yeah. When do I want to generally upgrade Diggs as Halfling? That's a great question. Uh, I probably around three-ish round four-ish is generally but it's very like it's much more variable than i have ever thought like you can on some maps get away with just shipping to a bunch of brown hexes and taking digs other like you, like shipping halflings looks pretty good to me here right i get to a4 i get to f2 i get to g4 if i get like one dig or so you know you start to unlock even more uh, and, like, you can just get a lot of dwellings that way. You enjoy, yeah, round six upgrades can work. Like, my shipping dream suggests fire one. Yeah, there's a lot of coins on the past tile, but fire one feels good. Uh, hey, the single dig that you were hoping for, Deranged, is happening. Bowser is going to really mess with mermaids here. This, this priest for mermaids might have to just go on the water track. Uh, and then they get no dwellings out this round. So that feels, that does feel awful. Uh, but which is locking up town space here and here it feels quite nice. Halai is dead. Uh, it sure feels that way. Sure feels that Halai is dead. Um, Halai does have double temple openings here, I guess. I mean, Halai can play culty mermaids and could play super shippy mermaids. Like, it can't actually be dead. I I feel like... I feel like mermaids aren't dead dead, but you guys can prove me wrong. Uh, it does look like giants are going to take C4. That's fine. Giants have no worker, so they dug C4, but they didn't build on it. Okay. That's fine. You think Halai's dead. Okay. Well, you guys can all prove that true someday. I'm not quite sure I see them as dead dead, but... That's just the nature of lakes. Okay, I mean, look, you guys have a lot more experience on this map than I do, but I'm not totally sure why double temple culty mermaids have no future here when the ship pass tiles in the game. Do I consider hard digging E3? E3. Uh, no, I don't, but water two double temple looks fun. That's kind of what I mean, right? Like double temple... Water 2, like, just an insane number of priests gets, like, get all the cultiness going early. Uh, or Mermaids is just going to hard dig E3. So there we go. Uh, this is quite even start if Halai gets coins. Yeah, so. Uh, anyhow. Um, I probably am supposed to upgrade B4. I mean, D5 is never going to be part of a, like, this. these are never part of a town anymore. So my instincts are upgrade B4. It feeds Giant's power only, which is also kind of nice. Here, I'm feeding my other opponent's power, too. Yeah, I think it has to go here. And I am building a temple, and I think it's Fire 1, but I'm not sure. Uh, 
you want E3, but you don't need to like hard dig it. Yeah. Uh, are we getting the four coin pass tile? You think that's great? It's fine. You dislike hard dig. Double temple seemed cool. I agree. I was totally on board with the double temple mermaids. I'm less sure. Like, I'm less convinced that the hard dig is fine. Like, is this? This isn't even a town. Like, this isn't a town hex for them. I guess it get like it. Bowser's presumably beating them here too. Like, this hex feels like it gets them nowhere. So it's just a dwelling, and just a dwelling is fine, but I, I like double temple, but whatever. Uh, more leech for me? Yeah, like, look, I'm not too sad. Like, my, my position still seems pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think I just take fire one here. Uh, temp, double temple looked good. No cult factions around three priest coins. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think double temple looked pretty dang great here. Like... The water two, like fire one, like you can do the crazy ship game then too, probably. But it's okay. Uh, what happened? Workers got taken by giants. They're slowing. Yeah, I just temple for fire one. I'm running out of things to do otherwise. Uh, Earth two is probably still fine, by the way. But I think I prefer to do this shipping upgrades and stuff. Yeah, I think it's my preference, but I don't I don't mind Earth 2. I might get the first Priest of Fire, though, also. Like, if I pass here, Priest of Fire is an option. I don't know. The one cool thing about Earth 2 is that I'm getting a Coins action. Yeah, um, is it a Coins action next round, though? Or should I just single dig and build two dwellings? Like, single digging next round also looks pretty fine. Uh, Super gets the coins action as Giants. All that power leech is working well for him. Um, I am probably passing on to five coins in a cult step. It's a little too early to go for dwelling points. The cult step on fire might not matter as much if I send my priest to fire. But I don't totally know what my next round is. Am I possibly getting enough leech for double dig again? I get four power in a second, right? Four power gets me double dig again. Um, okay. Um, Bowser is sad about the no water too. Yeah. Um, okay. How do we feel about double dig again next round? Uh, super got greedy. What are we? Super got greedy about something. Coins were a huge mistake. Uh because I get double dig? I don't I don't know who we're talking about. Double digging again seems great. Um if I'm double digging again, I might not get priest to fire. This is probably just better. I mean, this is starting to be the one, two, three, four, five, six. Like this might be a six point tile. Uh six point tile versus two coins and a worker. Uh, God, it got more economy early. Two coins and a worker. Anyhow, double dig again is like for almost for surely correct, right? Double dig again is insane. It like it easily carves out the town space. Um. It makes our worker economy absolutely nutty. Everything is golden from there. Like, uh, I agree. I think I think it has to be double dig again. Um, yeah, our, our economy is going to be nuts here. Um, we will have to figure a way to actually you know score points pretty rapidly, but. Uh, mermaids have the dig tile. Super got the big building tile. Uh, double dig is threaded by mermaids, so yeah, I think it's just open double dig. Giants have no shipping yet. I think I do build A5 and then A4 just because in case giants find a way to start upgrading shipping, I have to be afraid of them taking A4 
Whereas a7, nobody can touch this round. A4 is my connection. Oh, connection hex too. Yeah, sure. Look at that. People thinking about connection. Uh, get econ, ask questions later. Points are for chumps. Yes, that is that is pretty much how I play Terra Mystica. I, points are for chumps, and you figure everything out later. Uh, super needed to pass before mermaids to get D6. Oh, I see what we're saying. Mermaids snag D6 here, and so giants don't get a stronghold town. Uh, double dig in round one and round two is usually a landside win if you get six to seven dwellings. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just, like, right, I have just an insane economy going while nobody else can do efficient things. Like, nobody else getting double dig means they can't do efficient stuff. Double spade is also two points, yeah. Uh, that's how I play every game I've watched when there's an econ. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I generally, I mean, so it is interesting, right? Like, a couple of games are structured such that points do matter more than econ, but... Most economic, like, engine games are wisely built around, like, building and actually exploring that economy tends to do better than just directly scoring points, which is great. Um, one of the things that we found during playtesting for, like, Terra Mystica Innovations was that one of the early iterations of Innovations made there being too many boring ways to score points that, like, weren't actually building things on the board, and the game is, like, terrible. Like, pretty... It felt pretty bad, in my opinion, because of that. Like, it's not fun if everybody just kind of does their own thing and doesn't care what's actually happening on the board. The real strength of Terra Mystica is we're fighting for space, we're fighting for towns, we're fighting for connection, we're fighting for hexes, and if you can ignore most of that and still score a ton of points, like Swarmlings... It gets kind of lame. Um, so, uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, economy's good. Uh, do do do. Halfling life. Blah blah blah. Uh, we might need a splendor stream. Oh boy. Yeah. See, splendor is not a game I love. Right. Splendor is awkward. Where I want to build a really cool engine, but uh, that's like that's a game that doesn't work well for me in my opinion. Like splendor is a like splendor at three players is still fairly interesting because you can you have to do some engine building but four player splendor is miserable to me like it's just like oh trying to build an engine loses you have to just like mostly go directly for points that's <laughs> that's boring that's dumb <laughs> there's a game there but it's not a game i enjoy um coins get taken by somebody i really should be paying more attention oh the priest of fire is still here um Priest of Fire is a worker in coins, and I'm clearly not using it to advance ship, and nobody else is threatening my stuff. Uh, yes, please? I mean, I guess Earth is also a fine long-term option, but yes, please? I really should be paying more attention to what my opponents were doing, but... I think this is fine, right? I'm building two more dwellings. Nobody's stopping me. Yeah. Uh, do do do. The you love about games is building an engine and not spaghetti and points. Yeah, halflings are also very good at just scoring throughout. Yes, they are. Uh, when Lakes was the arena map, you recall just getting double dig and worried about everything else later. Okay, yeah. Mermaids junked on giants. Yeah, we expected that. You don't understand the appeal of splendor above two player defense with the gems is such a huge part of the game. Yeah, well, so again, a lot of people like multiplayer dynamics over two player dynamics. Uh, largely me. So there's that. Getting some practice. That is indeed what we're doing, Barnawald. The main thing chat is advising us is take double dig now. Worry about things later. And then my instincts are don't worry about Earth 1 now. Take or take economy now. Worry about points later. Boom. You've learned the secrets uh, that I employ. Good luck. Uh, I am a fairly predictable player. That's why you keep arguing you take me in the uh, selection round. So... I don't plan to pull out anything particularly. Yeah, you, you go out. That's that's what I mean. I don't I don't plan to pull out anything particularly unpredictable. Uh, my strategy in F two O for many seasons has essentially been I'm gonna play my brand of game and hope that uh, you know I get some good breaks. I mean, really, I'm mostly still salty about handing you the win that one mermaids win you got like two seasons ago. You know, like well over a year ago. That was a, that was sloppy play by me. But outside of that. 
I have very few regrets in my F two O career about the actual decisions I've made. I mostly uh, think mostly think that my games have been played pretty solidly. So oh, that's really what we're trying to achieve tomorrow. We're gonna play a game that hopefully I can be proud of and hopefully I win. But meh. As long as I, at the end of it, can look and be like, I didn't really make that many mistakes and the game just didn't break my way, fine. Uh, nobody can reach my dwellings yet. Yeah. This is fine. We build some dwellings. Uh, you handed me the win last F2O. We are even. That's true. You did, let, you did let me sneak that one out. So, Really, honestly, what I would like is I would like to stop playing you or stop playing the opponents I keep getting where... I swear my opening round games, I tend to look at people's games afterward. I'm like, oh, they like basically didn't make a mistake. That's great. I wish that was the quality in all the F2O games. But like, honestly, I think most of the F2O games, you can point to some like fairly big mistakes in a lot of them. And I feel like my opponents don't usually do them in round one. Then, to be fair, last season, I did make the division finals. And I think my opponents made absolutely crazy decisions. But those crazy decisions were constantly hammering me because apparently my witches were the one thing that had to be stopped at all costs and everybody else could just do whatever they want. I'm still very salty about that game also. But anyhow, I think all my opponents made moves that were very questionable in that one. Um... And uh, I definitely lost, but I, I really, like, there was one minor thing in that game I regret that was, like, a one or two point mistake, but I mostly look upon that game and I'm happy how I played it. Uh, I just think my opponents did absolutely zany things, and if I was in their positions, like, I also would have been thrilled. I could have done better things, but these things happen. Banned witches? Indeed. Gotta stop playing Claybo. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's some of that, too, but... Azul is a better game than Splendor. Yeah, that could be. Some people think that. Uh, anyhow, uh, what are our opponents actually up to, by the way? The, see, this is <laughs> this is my one big thing downside. Tomorrow, I'm going to know exactly what my opponents are doing. Today, no clue. We're just like, oh, mermaids are sending priests around. Giants are rushing a temple here. Cool. Oh, did anybody take Earth 1? No. Everybody went economy this game. Like, this is what I also I mean, right? Like, can I get an Earth 1 rush tomorrow in my F2O game? Guarantee you there's, like, no way. My players tomorrow are not going to Earth One Rush, but in the other F two O games that we've been watching, like I just, I just like I want to play some of these players instead of constantly playing freaking like Barnawall and Nerd Cube in all my F two O games, like. But whatever, uh, where are mermaids going? No idea. Uh, blah blah blah. No need to worry about taking Earth One. Some jump at the table undervalues it. Well, that too. So. Uh, what do I think about implementing some sort of pick ban system for factions for tournaments? Uh, I don't really care. Like, I don't think you need to ban anything or have blocks. Uh, wow, giants also go fire one. The fire one rush. Uh, nobody's taken. <laughs> nobody's taken a VP favor. Oh, I mean, I love these games, but also like again, like it's it just it is a little ridiculous. Uh, build the dwelling. It's more economy. Uh, more economy's good. Uh, I still have this cult step at some point. Um, what am I even doing next round? Hell if I know. Um, like, I, this town round comes in, so, like, I could build a temple next round if I get some coins, but I'm building it in an awkward spot. I'm, like, feeding my opponent so much leech to build a temple. Or, I'm building a temple and not getting the town points in the town round. Although just snagging two key town next round and building a temple anyhow, not that bad. We'll see. Uh, I don't actually know what I'm doing. Yes, call taflings. Yeah, I mean call taflings is pretty greedy though, right? That's the biggest issue. But two key town in a game with no cult factions is just strong. Like even if I don't win cults, even if it helps me get a bunch of second places, it's strong. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, no need for bans with auctions. That's where I am. You hope I win tomorrow so you can play me. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun, but we'll see. Uh, super hoarding coins. Yeah, he has a lot of coins. Uh, I think I may as well take this fire cult step. I mean, I could pass on to seven coins otherwise, which certainly isn't bad. Um, again, are my opponents doing things? Witches have to pass. I think, like, all my opponents are passing right this is interesting yeah ignoring the cult step is like very tempting here um the cult step is two power and a step which is like nice but passing also just has me have tempo next round whereas currently i don't 
Currently, I'm going to be going quite different. What pass tile do I get here? Witches are going to pass. Mermaids might have to pass. Giants have to pass. Uh, and then I, I might get the spade tile then, I guess. But yeah, I don't have a huge need for the spade. I really need priests and coins. Yeah, I think this cult step might be a trap. Just seven coins is very good. Seven coins is so very good here. Uh, it would be interesting to ban all men factions on base. Uh, yeah, the game gets so different as soon as you start banning factions, though. Like, the balance of the game is crazy. Mermaids are building the sanctuary. Oh, okay, mermaids have an action. You're right, yeah. Mermaids are going to sanctuary. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Duh. I wasn't reading that correctly, but you're absolutely correct. Uh, build temple on G4. Um, that's That's a line. Um, how do I get there? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, again, I, like, I can't, I do think I need to build a temple next round. Like, I think temple for water one is just, like, quite good. Like, having extra priest production is great. One ship, take F4, G4. My hard digging F4? Hard dig F4 is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine workers? Oh, yeah, that is actually possible. Huh. Um, intrigue. Take F4, G4, temple on G4 with water one, unless there's a water one rush, but there's probably not a water one rush. And even if there is, then I just take an earth one. Although that's a very late earth one. But yeah, water one got taken. Uh, okay, slightly awkward. Double temple next round. Ooh, three temple half leads is spicy. This is the man... Uh, now the question, Zavok, is if we're doing that, if we do that, of which, by the way, I'm very into, am I feeding my opponents a zillion leech on d4, d5? Or am I taking the two key town on b5 and foregoing those later points? The double temple thing is incredibly alluring, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm very on board with this. It does make the whole culty half leads plan very exciting also. I can send a priest to a cult here, like Earth, get some coins. I can take the two key town. It's not a lot of economy, but it's a lot of points, I think. It does hurt my whole, you know, score five points next round. Templing on d4, d5 is awkward because it gives my opponents a million leech and it doesn't help my own towns. Huh. Double temple is really good here, though, actually. Like, just taking water one, presumably, into earth one. Having all the priest production for shipping and later dig advances. It's very fun. I guess one of the temples is going to feed my opponents a million leech anyhow. So I could just do it. How, like, how? How bad is feeding, like, mermaids and giants four for threes at this stage of the game anyhow? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to temple here. I'm going to rush a water one temple here. And then I'm going to decide what I'm doing. But delaying the two key town is, seems smarter because passing on five points feels pretty bad. Halai's dream? Oh, yeah. I mean, Halai's going to take the leech. I mean, Halai needs the resources. Like, I'm feeding Halai so much power this round if I do this. By the way, Halai. Oh, Halai can take the two key town on me potentially this round. Um. Do I care that much about Two Key Town, though? Maybe it's silly to worry too much about Two Key Town. Maybe it's not that great. I don't know. We'll see. 
We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I do think taking Temple for Water 1 and Temple for Earth 1 this round is pretty zany, though. Like, I have a great economy going. Having tons of priest income feels fine. Being able to ship a ton looks great still. Like, nobody's touching my hexes, really. Uh, Bowser just advanced ship here, first action. Yeah, so where's Bowser off to? Coins go to super. He's stockpiling resources. Yeah, that's expected. Kalai has coin issues. Where's Bowser going with that shipping? Just securing F3? Halai sends a priest to air. Okay, that's fine. I'm just taking water one here and chugging along with the plan. I don't three town anyhow, and I get two towns with this. Yeah, I think I think that's a reasonable argument. So I just throw two temples here, and then I do I town next round, and then I get one more town later. And I just feed my opponents tons of leech this round, and we say it's okay. Yeah. Delayed F4 annoys Bowser a lot. Ooh, well, oh yeah, G4. G G4 and F4, yeah, true. Bowser does want neighbors. Yeah, Bowser lack of neighbors is rough. Actually, yeah, del delaying Bowser's power leech is good too. Uh, my next move is probably priest to earth then. Priest to earth here, and then doing the other temple, I think, is still good. Stronghold around five. <laughs> no, no stronghold in round five. No stronghold. Um, presumably no sanctuary either. Round five is likely going to be like advanced digs, advanced ship put some more dwellings down. I mean, round four is partly going to be that. Um, looks like we're going to upgrade and give Halai just, yeah, the absolute. <laughs> just These guys are getting insane leeches from me, but I think I upgrade, actually. I lied about sending the priest to Earth here. I think I upgrade first. Stop annoying Bowser. What did he do? Bowser joined the game. He's a nice guy. I agree. We don't need to annoy him in any way. Um, Halai prepping for more power. Indeed. I mean, he's taking it all. He obviously should. He he needs all the power. Like, I'm feeding him a lot. He's going to have a pretty good cult game. Like, again, he's like, he is going to take two key town next round. Like, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. Wow. Bowser, Bowser upgrading here to set up the town next round, not just paying for it. Uh, and ignoring ignoring upgrading F3 where he has a neighbor. So yeah, delaying F4 really is hurting Bowser. Like, he's really waiting for me for this whole town stuff. Like, he'll probably take H6 and then hope that I'm coming to one of these hexes soon. But Super takes a priest here. Super can double ship. Uh, does that frighten me? Super double ships and just gets to put some dwellings out. That doesn't scare me at all. That's fine. You were wondering if Bowser should have given maids H4 and taken H6 just to have a neighbor. Yeah, I mean, it's a little tough since I3 gives you an extra dwelling uh, off of the game plan. But yeah, Bowser is kind of looking rough in terms of the economy. Halai has a lot of pre-sun cults, so he gets a lot of coins here. I finally have fed him an insane amount of power. Um, although I wonder if he builds a temple here, like should mermaids use all that power for a temple? I guess mermaids economy still sucks too. He only has, he only has four structures on the board. That can't be very good. Yeah, that can't be very good. I'm pretty sure I'm just building no big building this game, right? I'm, I'm attempting to go 15 network half lanes by building no big building, uh, which feels pretty good. Like if I win network this game. And eventually, I still just have some dig advances and other stuff. None of my opponents are scoring a ton of points. I'm going to have Earth 1, Water 1. Feels like, feels like, uh, yeah, feels feels good. Admittedly, this is the sort of game plan I like, too, where, like, I just, I have hexes, and I'm just not under that much concern. Like, nobody's really able to significantly take a lot of my hexes. Oh, Halai is going to just go for the two key town now. Um, okay, that's fine. I don't... I 
I at least I assume that's. Oh well, no, he wait, no, duh, duh. He's he's mermaids. So he doesn't have to take it yet. Um, okay. And he doesn't take it. He's just setting up his economy. I mean, that's crazy. He has no worker income now. Yeah, Halai's worker economy is hilarious. Actually, that that trading post is confusing to me. I I don't I like I guess he's gonna always do it for the town anyhow, and now he's set to take town first action, but. A little intriguing. Uh, I'm going to send this off. Good luck with my F2 game. Wow, ho, oh, relentless. Thanks so much. The F2 game's great. Halai going tall mermaids? Almost certainly, yeah. Sanctuary for air one is like 11 VP. Oh, you're telling me I'm supposed to sanctuary for air one? Uh, that's not going to happen, but maybe, but probably not. I, I doubt I sanctuary for air one, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, yeah, thanks so much for the prime sub. Like, nine months is crazy. That's awesome. Thanks for the good luck. Uh, I do hope for good luck. I mean, I hope to play well. But as I say, I think F2O games require a combo of playing well and kind of just getting the breaks. Um, like, yesterday's game, or like, I, I, again, I slightly watched, like, like, last Saturday's game, Ninja probably played the best game. But also, like, if you put me in Ninja's position where I'm just, like, getting gifted like a coins action and the game breaks well, great. If you put me in that first game and like, yes, Claybo ran a very interesting cultist line and good for him, but I kind of think cultists down to that auction were just zany. And like, I think cultists could have done so many things that game. Like, I think he just had a huge margin for error in that game, just breaking well for him regardless. Sign me up for those. Like I, I, I want those type of like situations. Yeah. The bidding was absurd in game one. Yep. I would agree. Um, chat hated the bidding. Uh, well, that makes sense, but so that's my point. Like, uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. My general F2O experience is, I swear I wind up at the tables that everybody plays well. Uh, I would love people to make some mistakes and make my life easier tomorrow, but we'll see. Um, I'm certainly not immune from mistakes by any means either. I could totally throw my game, but my general belief is that most of my F2O games have been pretty dang clean. Um you know, minor sort of mistakes, but uh, if we were chalking up, like, minor mistakes versus moderate mistakes versus outright blunders, yeah, like, I don't think I have anything you can mark as a blunder, whereas other games, I do think players just flat out, like, take pretty baffling actions where we throw multiple question marks after them, but it's all good. Uh, we get this Earth 1, boom. There we go. A triple, yeah. Double Temple Giants, though. Double Temple Giants is pretty cool from Super. Super does have Earth 1 now. Has tons of resources still. Like, Super's game is fine here also, probably. But yeah, this this feels good. A win is a win. A win is a win. The bidding was fine. All right, well, see, these are the things. I don't know everything. But I, uh, yeah, I, I guess ultimately my point is, yes, I want a combination of good play coupled with good luck where the game just breaks my way, where my opponent's just combination of decisions and the past tiles and everything just kind of works out. Um, you can't always get that, and that's fine. But uh, better to be lucky than good. Yeah, I mean, really, really should be both. Both is what I'm hoping, what I want, but that is asking a lot, I suppose. Uh, what do I pass for here, the dwelling tile? Passing for the Dwelling Tile feels pretty good. Three coins and probably quite a few points because I'm probably I'm going to F4, G4, F2 type stuff next round. Um, yeah, I suspect I'm going a lot of those places. So Dwelling Tile, Dwelling Tile. Yep, Dwelling Tile it is. Oh, wait, did I have anything possibly worth doing there? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Dwelling Tile. Halai and Super have too many coins now. Um, I don't understand Halai. Like, I actually don't understand Halai building this trading post, right? Like, this is crazy, right? Like, I don't, I don't, 
I guess he gets on the trading post tile, but like just build it next round. Like why have built it this round? I don't I don't agree with building it this round, but oh well. Uh it probably wasn't fine. <laughs> okay, you you don't even think you don't necessarily think the mini was fine. Yeah, I mean whatever. Again, it's it's gonna be what it is. The F two O games are also pressure, people make mistakes, it's all good. Um it's it's just is a high it's a high visibility tournament so you'd like to do well you'd like to win it's fun to be there but yeah it's it's uh it takes it takes a combination of factors so again really I'm just hoping to wind up in a situation tomorrow where at least I can play a good game and feel like I'm having fun and I'm hoping that things don't break too poorly I'm hoping my opponents don't do crazy blocks on me um that's uh, that's really where I'm at, but uh, you never know what's gonna happen. So, Halai's greatest strength is uh, he's in a lot of games nobody else can play. Halai's greatest weakness is that he plays a lot of chaos. Oh, that's a good yeah. No, that's a good line age. Um, can we hit three ship? Uh, maybe, but that's a lot of coins. I don't think I want to hit three ship, but two shipping feels very attainable. Uh, so I can at least you know like two ship and two dwelling. <laughs> I'm apparently going to have to go feed my dog or something because he's going to drive me nuts otherwise here. But, um, yeah, two ship feels very uh, doable. So I'll be right back. Oh, hey, team, are we getting a coins power action? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you're about to say. We might be going three ship. Like, Halai doesn't want... Does Halai even take a coins action here? Or does Halai need double dig? See, because it feels like Halai needs double dig and not the coins, uh, which means I'll take the coins and, oh, no, I can't double dig anymore, but I'm halflings that have a zillion priests. Oh, he does take the coins, though. Wow. Halai does block the coins. Okay, fair enough. He does take the two key town. That was expected. Oh, he because he has power to double dig again because of the two key town. Okay, taking the coins and then still being able to double dig is pretty sweet. Good for him. Okay, fair enough. Um, so we could we could coin town. Coin town does let us do like triple ship. I. Uh, is triple ship even good this round, though? Why do I want triple ship this round, out of curiosity? Because I get C1 on top of F2, G4. I don't think I need triple ship, though. Triple ship feels still not needed. Oh, I also ship to I2, I see. So I would build four dwellings. I don't need four dwellings, so I don't really care. I feel like just building two dwellings is fine here. So, like, this round... This round can just be... Although, God, coins are pretty tight here because I'm not building trading posts till late. Coin Town has to be fine here. Late trading posts. There's so many pat points on the past. I have Earth 1, Water 1. I don't feel good about I don't feel great about this team, but it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I guess upgrade here. Oh yeah, because super. Well, no, super's taking B six this turn for a town. Maybe I don't know. I'll whatever. I'm giving super a power regardless, so it can go here. And then yeah, I think I think it's a coin town. Coin town solves a lot of the problems. All right, uh, this feels like a low-scoring game. Maybe Tall Mermaids is a stroke of genius. Uh, Tall Mermaids is going to be fine. It'll be interesting. Um, 
Got this game for Christmas by watching a video of Lumen play it. There were so many things going on. You've been too scared to open the box. There's a lot going on, Zazak, but you're a super highly rated Agricola player. I assure you, no matter what you feel about this game, Agricola has more complexity going down under the hood. Like, all those card interactions, all the, like, variable resources each game, like... This game has a lot of the kind of variable resources, setting up economy, turning into points. Like, there's a reason I think a lot of uh, Agricola. Ooh, F2 was a was a brown hex, wasn't it? That's uh, that's a bummer. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess he needs that to expand. And if he's double digging and only getting, well, he's reaching another hex, but I uh, whatever, that's fine. That If that's what he needs to do, he can do it. Halai still looks kind of trapped. Uh, but yeah, Terramisca is easier, yeah. Uh, we're never playing faster than Halai, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to a new life is better than old life, yeah. How quickly are we passing? Uh, if we're fast enough, we'll get the pastel and the coins. I don't think we're fast enough. Gen Bowser's genius is being brought to bear. To be honest, you hated Agricola first few times you played it too. Yeah, no, that's fair. That happens. Uh, we're just advancing ship now. Do 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 shipping. We're still gonna advance ship and at least build G four this round. But yeah, not being able to build F three or F two is a bummer. But it's okay. Even getting to build G four is quite good. And then we have a cult dig that can go on G six. Um. And even if I just get to build one dwelling and I somehow get on this pastel, but I mean, I think Halai, Halai might be building a dwelling and just going here. Like, Halai getting onto the ship tile here is, like, very much, I think, his game plan. So, yeah, I don't think I get the ship tile, actually, unless I pass for it now. Huh, is it? I only, like, it feels so wrong not to build some more dwellings here. Maybe I am still triple shipping then. Uh, triple shipping only gets me C1 now. Awkward. Do I have enough to justify hard digging G6? If I ship advance, I could turn a priest back into a worker and hard dig and build. Like, I could build these three still. That might be what I'm doing. Build dwellings? Yeah, building dwellings, I think, has to be correct. Uh, I don't think I can pass. Do you think there's a lot of good pastels? Yeah, I think ultimately coins are still good for me right now, right? I th I think that's the main thing. Like, I might not get points pastels, but seven coins, five coins are still quite good here for everything I need to do. Um, all my opponents being ahead of me in points is not particularly surprising. Um, I very much was starting from behind, and I do still have this very great 12 points of dig advances that are quite cheap. So that's always good to have. And that's a lot of actually why I need workers to be able to, like, I need to win network too. So building dwellings is too important here for network reasons. Yeah, I think build G4 and then hard dig and build F6, G6 is actually quite good this round. It means turning a priest into a worker, but when you're making three priests, turning a priest to a worker is fine. You think single dig is actually worth it over just hard digging? Can I upgrade dig once? Um... Upgrading dig once and taking workers, I guess, is equivalent, right? Like, I could do that. But I guess just taking single dig, like Zavok says, is also fine here, actually. It does, it does, I guess, I guess single dig is like using power for three workers. Then that's not bad. Yeah, the single spade is often invisible to me because it's just, it's usually not that efficient, especially if you have a lot of workers, but it might be fine here. Uh, ooh, super passed for the ship tile. That slightly annoys Halai. I mean, Halai can go on the big building tile, but interesting. Super's still just riding an insane number of resources. He also took a coin town. Super taking a coin town is very interesting to me. Like, Super has so many resources now. Like, giants are loot. Giants have so many resources. Like, he's easily going to... He's going to take a coins action and triple ship next round. Like, he's getting good points off of all of that, but... Yikes, it's still like wild to me to stockpile this many. Uh, I mean, stockpiling resources can work sometimes, but it can also hurt you on stuff. I mean, giants, yeah, I mean, giants still get to expand through things. Yeah, Halai saying ouch about the pass. Oh, well, whatever. Single dig is fine here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all out of channel points now. Last treat Loki gets from you in a while. Oh, you tried to feed him there. I see that. Single spade is always spending four power for three workers. Well, yeah, it is. It is. But often I don't care about having three workers. 
I don't, see, the thing is, I don't always plan to advance digs later. Um, I don't know. Anyhow, the point is... Point is, yes, I do kind of ignore a single dig. It's usually not very efficient, but... All right. <laughs> Hi, Loki. Oh, you were so excited. Look at how cute you're trying to be. Yeah, look at you. You're such a good boy. All right. Yeah, good boy. Uh, okay, what am I up to? Uh, oh, yeah, building this dwelling. This dwelling is clearly... Oh, Bowser wants me so bad, too. Bow I missed... Wait, Bowser is... Oh, Bowser doesn't need me. Bowser is building this dwelling, though. That's fun. Bowser is double-touting this round. Interesting. Bowser double touting this round is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, this seven coins pass tile or this five coins pass tile are actually great for me. I need so many coins still, so... It, it actually looks fairly likely that I might be, like, I might have a very short round five, and that I might have a very long... I might have, like, a very long round six. Halflings always care about workers, yeah. Uh, you hate to go against Zevok, but you think saving the power might be better? Um, I mean, I, I think that, I think I'm on board with the, oh, single dig is gone. Oh, well, that's awkward. I see Bowser had to took that. Um, Okay. Well, with single dig being gone, now we're back to the discussion phase. We can advance dig once. We advance dig once, we take the workers, and we still pull this off? With, like, no power? Yeah, the witches, yeah, witches took single dig, thanks. Yeah, Dr. Blah, that's kind of what I was just thinking about. We can we could have a pretty fast round, but God, I got to build more dwellings this round. Like, building up my worker economy is too important. So... Yeah, I have just enough resources for the dig advance, take workers, build two dwellings. I'll have no power. Which means I probably am not going to be able to pass and get a coins action unless I get a bunch of leech next round. Which, it's not clear I'm getting much leech, which is part of why I hate this map, by the way. But yeah, this is going to work. It's going to barely work, but it's going to work. Yeah, this is just too important. It's too important to pass on. Getting more dwellings out is just so many points in economy. It's points on the pass. <laughs> Dude who is playing brown on lakes. How much leech? I got a bunch of early leech. Yes, people built leech around me early. But then since then, I mean, I guess I'm getting some free power here and there. But, yeah. Build econ, worry about leech later. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with that. I just, I think really, again, when it comes to, like, I'm just not going to be getting, I don't think I'm going to be getting enough leech to get a coins action at the start of round six, and I guess that's fine, but, like, my next round is going to be short. My next round is going to be just, like, dig, or just build, and then pass on to the dwelling tile again. Um, But that's fine. We're passing on to a bunch of coins anyhow. Yeah. Well, are we passing on to seven coins? I'm not sure we pass on to seven coins or not. Bowser might want seven coins here. Uh, we might only pass on to five. Uh, could it be worth it to Sanctuary for Air 1? People suggested that earlier, but I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Um, yeah, it, it's probably going to be wrong. Um, Bowser collects a priest. Oh, Bowser's trying to stall for a dwelling tile. Maybe. I don't think that's going to work for him, though, because, well, it's not going to work for him. But I don't particularly want to stall out Bowser. I'd rather have Temple on him, I think. Although I guess I want the Dwelling Tile available. No, if the Trading Post Tile is available, that's fine. I'll take the Trading Post Tile instead. But yeah, building these two dwellings is too important. Uh, our points have uh, certainly uh, improved significantly uh, this round. But our opponents, like, I mean, Super has an insane amount of resources, while I have slightly more points, not anywhere near the level of resources. Uh, but 
It's okay. 52 viewers for TM. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Wow, thanks. Uh, ter there, are, there are a lot of people that watch Terra Mystica, yeah. Like, uh, that's the one thing. Like, if I was streaming purely for viewers, I would not be streaming so much Agricola. Maybe we take the four coin tile? Yeah. Uh, as long as I still town if Giants try to mess here. Um, Giants... Oh, Giants could try to mess with me, but, like, I'm going to single dig this hex and then build here, and then even if I do, yeah, I can just plow through here. Uh, oh, wow, Witches took the cult step. Yeah, I'm still taking seven coins here over the trading post tile. The trading post tile doesn't do enough. I need the seven coins much more. Um, so, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, I want to just build G5, and that's the only thing I need to do this round. Building G5 is the only action I actually in any way require. Um, and I will turn it brown. I mean, is that just asking Giants to bomb me? I mean, Giants not taking coins or just bombing me first action seems kind of wild. I mean, I guess it gets them to I5 then. Whatever. Giants are always a threat on two ship. They can threaten like a million things. I doubt this happens, and if it does, so be it. Um, Giants want D8, E8. Yeah, you would think so. Um, I I don't know. Anyhow, Super Snap coins off anyhow, because he's a good player. So yeah, that's, that's just that. Um, so yeah, I just take G5 here, and then... Um, I think I'm basically passing. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I still could Sanctuary for Air 1, but yeah, I think it's just a huge trap. Like, I think saving all my resources to make sure that I can actually dig advance, build these trading posts, and build these dwellings is just too important. Like, making sure I hit 15 network and just easily, like, win network, I think has to be too important. Anyhow, we build this. We're not going to get squashed on this. Uh, priest to air could be fine here, I guess, is another action. Priest to air is like turning it into a worker, but it probably saves us air points. And there's a lot of, I mean, we have so much priest production. Yeah, probably priest to air and then pass. Super clearly has too many things to do to pass here, but. Well, the priest to air is gone. Okay. Um, G5 and advanced dig. Yeah, advancing dig saves us a priest production now. So we could just advance dig here. Um, I probably advanced dig here and then pass. I mean, part of the allure of sending a priest somewhere was to slightly get our... Part of the allure of sending priest locations is to get slightly more power, which increases the chance that we might... Uh, it increases the chances that we get uh, coins power action, but I mean, Bowser looks very likely to pass pretty quickly too. Uh, what's Halai up to this round? Halai might want to build a stronghold. Halai needs to build his economy rather than passing. I can take one action here, surely, without getting screwed. Oh, Water 1 got blocked from Super. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, let's just get our dig advance out of the way. God, I need so many workers. I might have to take a worker town. Like, I still, yeah, this this sanctuary can't be worth it. I need so many workers. I guess some of these priests can be workers, but yeah, I'm, I'm just going to pass. I guess I pass. If I need so many workers, maybe I pass for the trading post tile still. Do I value, two, like, a worker at two coins? That almost has to be true. Yeah, the TP does look pretty good. The TP tile also has to annoy others. I, so I'm guaranteed a victory point tile, but the big building one's not very good, and I don't have things to do. Um, like, I don't have enough good actions to take this round to really want to hang around it much more. Like, what else am I doing? Building a dwelling that doesn't earn income? Cool. I could build trading posts, but they're just three points extra next round. So... Yeah, I think I think passing on to the trading post tile has to be right here. Uh, Bowser might do it right in front of me. It's not clear to me Bowser has any other actions that are worth it here. Um, I mean, maybe Bowser wants the cult step still, because my cult game is turned pretty ugly, by the way. But mermaids have only built six structures. Yeah, I mean, again, Halai is running some stuff.
I might be with the uh, people that said Halai was doomed earlier. I might be warming up to Halai is doomed. So, I mean, actually, uh, Halai having most of the cult points is at least great. Because he doesn't much else. I'm at 70. I have quite a few points next round. I'm winning network. Like, it feels pretty good, but we'll see. Bowser took the cult tile over seven coins, so it feels like he has to be looking for the cult step. Yeah, I mean, maybe he thought he was going to win the air track with it, though, and Halai focused on winning air. Uh, but I guess Bowser, yeah, I mean, Bowser can get one more worker if he just advances on air, although Bowser doesn't have a worker probably has a coin problem. Um, yeah, I really don't think I'm getting leeched this round, so I don't think I get a coins action, though. Um, but we'll see. Double dig for Halai, just getting himself some network area, getting himself some town space, I guess. Yeah. I guess Bowser wants to build D3 still, and yeah, that's actually what happens. So, okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think I pass here. Again, I'm not getting a coins action, so that's a bit of a bummer, but I guess it's fine. I need nine coins plus eight. I need 17. Oh, and I might need to advance ship. Uh, I do have to advance ship, right? Uh, oh no, C5. If I build C5 next round, I actually don't need a third ship in. Um, so 17 coins, am I going to be at 15 if I take this? Okay, I'm probably fine. Even if I don't get to open a coins action, which, by the way, this would be a game with zero coins action, which would be pretty sad. Sanctuary has lots of VP if you want to convert resources to VP. Yeah, I don't think I have any problem if, about converting stuff to VP. How bad is taking C5 here? Oh, um, taking C5 here is fine, I guess. But just taking the trading post tile anyhow feels fine. If I have to advance ship next round, I still have a town coming in. I, like, I think I have ways. My bigger issue might be the workers. Right? I need six workers, seven, eight, nine, ten workers, and then possibly digs for quite a few of these. I do have 13 workers, though. No, it's probably going to work out. It's probably fine. I probably have, like, just about the... Oh, and I have a couple extra priests. Uh, by a couple extra, I mean, I have a lot of extra priests. I have tons of extra priests, actually. So many extra workers. Um, so yeah, I could do quite a few digs to make things happen too. So should be fine. I guess this town could get awkward without better neighbors. Um, this town, I guess, yeah, it's not clear I'm going to get other neighbors. So that's, that could require several digs, but yeah, I might be able to get another coin town. Uh, there's no other coin town, uh, no other coin town, but I don't, think I even need another coin town. Um, just build a million dwellings. Well, I don't have infinite digs. I don't have infinite digs. But regardless, I should hit 15 network here. Um, so, like, I'm going to hit... This is 18 points. This is another 8. 26. A couple of digs takes me to 30. I pass is 8. That's a 108. I win network. Uh... 126 I get a town 135 uh, that's not great 135 is not great great but it's solid uh, I get a I get not a lot of call points I mean I have a lot of priests so maybe I sneak a few more but but I guess I get like five cult points so that's gonna be about 140. Like a 140 for points this game. 140 should be competitive. It's not guaranteed to win. But it should be pretty competitive. Super is probably my biggest competitor. Halai, I think, is going to just run out of points. Like, all these dwellings are not points for Halai. And Halai already has several trading posts up. I mean, I guess he's going to build Air 1 yet. Depends a bit on what pass tells. Halai also wants to build a stronghold, though. Yeah. And Halai will get another town. Yeah, he's building a trading post just so he can build a stronghold into a town, though. Eh, Halai's going to score quite a bit, though, still, too. Like, he's going to be pretty close this game. Bowser also has most of the other remaining cult points. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody has... Every, it's going to be pretty close. Super ties network, surely... Super built two early temples. Super tie network feels bold to me, or like unlikely, 
right? Super's going to have to build three trading posts, four dwellings. I guess he has a million resources, but the hexes are surely the biggest problem. I guess Super has a bunch of hexes hanging out over here if he gets more digs. Super probably ties network, I guess. But does Super even get another town then? Like, it kind of looks like Super's trying to force a town over here. Or he's just giving himself trading post locations. Super also is the one that doesn't have water one. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty. I think it's going to be a pretty tight game all around. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure I buy the super tied network theory either, though. Like, I think it's the hex problem, right? Yeah, I, I agree. He needs four more hexes and he only has one more dig. Or I think he only has one more dig, right? Yeah, he does only have one more dig. I mean, maybe he gets there. It's only four more hexes. and So, I mean... This this does only, like, he probably can tie network because it only requires one double dig in order to make it happen. But then it, then it means no other town. So he ties network without a town? It's probably fine. E2, G1, G2, hard dig? Oh, E2 also gives him G1. Although that still doesn't give him a town? Oh, no, it does give him a town because of the hard dig. And because he gets G1, G2. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, Super super, super maybe does time my network. So maybe it's only 15. Super should advance dig. Yeah, I guess that's actually possible. Super advancing digs a lot. Although, Super can't... There's no way Super can advance dig and time my network, right? That's an insane amount of resources still. To do that and this... Like, I get he has a lot of resources, but... Does he really have that many? Maybe. Whatever. He'll do what he does. His economy is huge. His economy is definitely huge. He took a coin town. He took, you know, a, he got a lot of leech, partly for me. But we'll see. Whatever. It's fine. Again, like, I ultimately, the thing is, like, after looking around a lot here, like, it's kind of interesting to think about what's happening, but I don't know if I can actually, like, I can't do a lot to change a lot of what other people are doing, and I can't do a lot to change what I'm doing, right? Like, I kind of am doing my thing, and they're kind of going to do theirs. Sanctuary this round? We talked a lot about the Sanctuary, but I'm pretty sure the Sanctuary was wrong for me. Like, the Sanctuary is quite point efficient, but I think it really hurts network. And I guess I guess I could have just taken second on that. Oh, for Giants. I see. Sanctuary for Giants? Maybe. But that also feels like a lot of points. Well, Sanctuary Air 1 for Giants, though, instead of Advancing Dig, is also point efficient for them. Yeah, I don't know. We are just chatting idly. We don't have a lot of decisions. I don't think we have a lot of decisions to make in the final round, even. Like, my first action this round probably is going to be build C5. Just because building C5 is, like... It does guarantee me that I don't have to try to find a way to afford this shipping. Um... And that feels pretty important, or, like, valuable. It's, like, worth doing. And then I just build a trading post. I build a dwelling. Build a trading post. Build a dwelling. Make a town. Build a trading post. Build a dwelling. Like, you like the Sanctuary for Giants? Yeah, the Sanctuary for Giants makes sense. Oh, and they're going to get big building. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. If, if Giants are going to be on the big building tile. Oh, and Halai is not getting the shipping tile. Oh yeah, I yeah, Sanctuary Giants makes a ton of sense then too, the fact that since they're gonna get this tile. Um But that also makes super tying me on network that much harder. Yeah, Halai has no pass tile here, so yeah, never mind. I'm, I'm also not worried about Halai's game. I should be able to beat Halai. Yeah, the Sanctuary probably puts him at 14 network. Uh is building C5 better than building E2 and making Super's game hard? Uh well that's an interesting question. Do I just build E2 first action and meddle with things? Um, interesting. I mean, if I take E2, I might need three shipping. But that the only way I need three shipping is if Super takes C5. Seems really unlikely. C5 is a complete distraction for Super. If I take... Well, if I take E2, how much does it hurt Super, though? Super just takes F4? I guess it makes Super's touting a lot harder, though. Yeah. 
It feeds Halai a bunch of... It does feed all my opponent's leech if I take that hex, but... Super doesn't lose that much. Halai might have time to take C5. I don't think Halai possibly takes C5. What does C5 do for Halai? It doesn't give him a town. It doesn't give him... Like, he doesn't have Earth 1, right? Yeah, like, Halai's not building dwellings. Like, witches are going to beat him on... Uh, well, I guess Halai could be fighting Network. Okay, maybe Halai fights Network. Yeah. C5's under zero threat. Uh, you also think I'm just beating Super. I'm even on cults. I have Water 1, and I have more points than him. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I'm actually not sure Super's my threat either. Like, I think I'm beating Giants on Network anyhow. And I think I'm doing essentially the same thing Super is doing next round. Is the threat Bowser? Well, I mean, there's a chance that nobody's actually a threat, but I guess it almost has to be Bowser, right? Bowser is going to have, tw like, plus 20 on cults on me. Bowser's also going to get a lot of Water 1, Earth 1 points in the final round. He's behind me on network, but he's significantly ahead on cults. Yeah, I mean, Bowser almost has to be the threat, right? So, if Bowser's the threat... I don't know if there's a lot I can do. So... I don't think I'm going to do anything about it. Like, I think... I, I don't think I need to mess with anything or anyone. I think I probably do just take C5. I think Super should be building the Sanctuary. He's getting the big building tile. Like, Super builds Sanctuary, takes Air 1. Seems pretty clear. Where did Super's Priest go, by the way? Oh, Super's Priest went to the water track. Wow, the, the cult tracks are actually messy. Wait a sec. My first action is Priest to Fire, isn't it? Whoa, 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 team. There's only one open Priest slot, and I'm going to have five Priests? I mean, I'm happy to use most of them as digs, but Priest to Fire might be... <laughs> priest to Fire is probably the first action. Um... <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a sec. <laughs> it almost has to be Priest to Fire. Oh, my God. Nothing else matters that much to me. Like, I want C5, but nobody's taking C5, so... Super did not build the Sanctuary. Wow, yeah, so Super's gonna fight me on Network. So if Super is fighting me on Network, maybe, God, maybe it is take E2 instead, though. Uh, but again, it doesn't even matter if Super ties you on Network, so we're at the same point. Super has a decent bit more resources, but it's pretty close. I have water one, he doesn't. He doesn't, he has less pass points if he's not building a sanctuary. I probably don't actually care then. Yeah, I think I'm taking this pre slot first action. <laughs> I think that's just what I do. Um, and then I probably respond with C5. Uh, but maybe I take E2 if giants don't. Palai can take another coins action, even though he doesn't need it. But what else is he going to do? I guess he could double dig. Oh my god, if Super gets the coins action, that's pretty sick. Oh, and actually if double dig happens, what do mermaids have to take but take C5? Oh, that's awkward. Uh, H7 is the play. I don't think I have enough resources for that. I don't I don't think I can justify triple digging, actually. Like, I don't I don't think that's a smart use of my time. Unfortunately, there are scenarios where triple digging puts me in trouble. Uh, it, it could be part of my town, but it doesn't have to be. Like, I don't need H7I6 necessarily. Like, that could work, but it does give me a free brown, but it's still three digs. Like, I don't need to three dig. I also still feel like I need C5. Uh, Halai did take the coins. Super did advance on digs. So Super is advancing digs. I think no sanctuary is a mistake too, but, or for giants, it seems very confusing. Like, it was a lot of points for giants, but digs is fun. Super should have built that yellow. Yeah, I mean, taking E2 is very tempting still. 
But I super has enough resources. I don't know how much E2 hurts him. <laughs> yeah, Gonzo, there is. Like, I think I'm just taking C5 here. I think not having to pay for this ship advance still brings me such delight. And yeah, Bowser's going to hard dig H7 probably, but it's fine. I have a neighbor, Bowser. I mean, the more I'm looking, like, Bowser doesn't have the resources to build everything he wants to, right? Like, I mean, Bowser will win network over mermaids, and he does have good cults, but I don't know if Bowser has enough resources for me to be that scared here. Uh, we are out of dwellings. Yeah, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't build E2 yet. I will eventually build E2, by the way. I'm all for building E2 now. Now that I have this set up, I'm totally fine. I can build, upgrade G4, upgrade G6, take F7 as my town. So I'm pretty willing to meddle with E2 now. Um, but I have to trading post first, so that's fine. I'll trading post first. If super gets E2, I think it's fine. Uh, two for ones, I generally think I just accept, even if I don't know for sure what it is. I should calculate, but I'm not going to try to sit here and calculate exactly. We kind of calculated it might be too much. Ooh, gross. Fire three from Halai is annoying, but I guess probably foreseeable. So that first priest action didn't do a hell of a lot, but... um, Oh, well. You don't think I want Leech anymore? Probably not, but taking two-for-ones is usually not too painful. Like, to be honest, if I take a couple two-for-ones and they turn into a ship advance, it's fine. And I did need a few more coins in the previous calc, so, like, I think it's okay. Uh, I will burn here. Yeah, we'll burn one just to keep our power situation a bit nicer. Super does secure E2. He's hurt all of you. Uh, Bowser gets free power regardless of where I upgrade at the moment. So I guess I just give him free power at the moment. Yeah. You liked that leech? No further. Interesting. Um, if I, I probably am just taking two for ones cause it's kind of just what I do, but yeah, it might, it might cost me, I guess, but without exact calculating, I'm just going to do it. Is it G4 better? So we get the free leech. Bowser can upgrade wherever he likes. So I don't think it matters. Like Bowser's not getting another town, right? Oh God. Wait a sec. Is Bowser getting another town? Was there a way Bowser could have re tried to actually get a third town here? Probably not. He doesn't have enough resources. But yeah, that would have actually been... Yeah, he doesn't have enough spades. Uh, mermaids upgrade digs with a priest town? Probably? I have no idea how, how Halai is getting enough points here. I don't know what Halai is doing. Uh, but yeah. I don't see how Bowser gets another town, especially now that he upgraded over here. Before Bowser upgraded over here... Eh, this is close. Like, right? If this, if this trading post had just been on H7... It's still probably too expensive to get the town over here, but it's it's a lot closer. It's closer than what I liked. But yeah, he's certainly not getting it now, so it's fine. He is just trying to be competitive on network. I agree. It's fine. Bowser can do his thing. Uh, E2 got taken, so yeah, I don't really care. Is there anything I can meddle with? I could meddle with Bowser's H8 here for a single worker. That is probably totally fine. He has Earth 1 and a dwelling tile. I think I have one extra worker, right? Especially, yeah, how's digging I-5? That's exactly, or not I-5, how's digging H-8? Why am I digging I-5? Ew. Um, digging H-8 out from witches here feels defensible. I don't know if it matters. I loop back to, I don't know if it matters. The dwelling is three resources for three points. Trading posts are five resources for six points. I guess if I take this hex away from him, maybe he just does two trading posts. But if he does a dwelling, does he even get his two trading posts? So then do I care? I think the answer is I don't care. Um, 
I'll just offer him his leech now, though. It's fine. I'll work towards getting a town. Like, the 11 VP town might be correct for me. I mean, it might be correct for Halai. But I almost certainly just want the 11 VP town, so I'll just work towards it here. And I'll worry about the rest later. Uh, you were saying how Bowser digging I-5 and the theoretical he's close to town line. Oh, yeah, yeah. How is he digging I-5? I see, 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 sorry. Uh, you think he had power for a single spin plus three worker dig? You don't know if it was possible. I don't think it was possible. I agree. I think it was just close-ish. And that's, I didn't, the point was I got temporarily frightened because I didn't consider it at all. And so then I was like, oh, wait a sec. Maybe he is going to upgrade H7. Maybe I'm helping him. Maybe I got to watch out for that. Uh, and I had a temp or a temporary moment of panic when I realized, oh God, he could three town on me, but he can't quite, he didn't have enough resources. Um, he does have fire too. Bowser has fire too. Um, so yeah, Bow Bowser Bowser was not that wildly away from a third town. Um, so I, I probably should have been paying more attention to it, but it, it's fine. Um, Bowser is now debating if he wants this leech. Uh, I think the answer might be he probably does want the leech. Like Bowser has the desire to build some trading posts and dwellings still, I think. But um, anyhow, what's been Super up to? He finished his dig advances. Yeah, Super finished dig advances. I guess Super still has 15 coins, 13 workers, but by the time he builds by the time he builds three trading posts, three dwellings, he does get another town. I mean, Super's still gonna be at a pretty good game, and he is gonna tie me on network. Um Yeah, I don't know. This game's this game's wild. Like it's definitely it's definitely a close game. Uh I do think I'm supposed to take this eleven point town though and be happy. Um because Super also probably just wants the 11 point town. Like, Priest Towns do nothing for Super. I mean, Priest Town, I guess, lets us trade this tie. So, every extra Priest I have could be some points. Like, I could on break a tie here. I could, you know, maybe tie here. There's some stuff here. But will this game be more or less close to my F2O game? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, too, right? Like, certain F2O games are very close, and then certain ones are kind of blowouts, and it's always hard to know. You'd like to think it's going to be pretty close to when you put a bunch of strong players together, but people in F2O games seem to just go off like kind of wild lines. Like this one has been fun. Everybody's taken very sensible, like good lines. Nobody rushed like, like again, everybody went economy early. And I just, I just think that's a stronger way to play the game almost always. Um, so we'll see though. Uh, H8 happened. Bowser declined the leech though. Okay. That's fine. Uh, there's a guy in Econ Sean's Agricola game with eight rooms and two family members, and you don't know what to think about the world. That's great. Yeah. No, there's, yeah, the, the Agricola Arena season is crazy right now. Uh, what do I think about Bowser's decision to carve through the south here? Uh, it's probably fine. I mean, it was a little risky, right? Because, like, I could have messed with it, but Bowser wants to beat Halai on network, so I think this is fine. I don't know. Oh, you meant round one. Oh, this in round one was very intriguing. It certainly messed with Halai, but it turned... Pr like, I think it was reasonably good for Bowser. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know for sure. That was the most unpredictable thing to happen other than the opening placements. Yeah, that's probably fair. Uh, what just happened? Do, do, do. Halai upgrades to a trading post. Uh, oh, yeah. Halai has several trading posts he wants to build. Oh, Halai could beat me to the town if he wanted. Oh, but Halai's upgrading over here? Sure. Give me a free leech. Cool. Don't don't decide on your town yet. Sure. I guess he just always wants a priest town, probably, but I will take the 11 point town with my next action. I just, I have to imagine the 11 point town is the correct move for me. Like, Super is also pushing for town. I mean, he's going to get it pretty soon. I'm at free leech territory, by the way. That's always fun. What score is winning this? Like 125? Oh my god, no, no, no. This game's going to be won by about 140. Like, when I calculated my points earlier, it was right about 140. Like, probably just a little under. Um, so, at, at the very least, to win the game, it's going to be like a 138. Um... Which is respectable here. Like, 138 being the winning score is kind of reasonable. We had kind of iffy factions, right? Uh, we had lots of points in the past tiles, but the track was, like, fine, but not incredible. 
the factions and the like setup weren't great great nobody got away with like incredible things i had pretty good stuff but super is gonna pass into like 120 territory yeah i mean exactly uh but super has very low cult points and then ties networks that's what i mean like 140 is right about 140 is pretty likely so uh i said i'm taking the 11 point town uh so let's do that Let us do that. Do, 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 do. Uh, what else could I take? I could take a ship town. I don't need that. Uh, I could take a worker town and have two more digs, but I don't need that. And then I could have a priest. I definitely have too many priests. Yeah, 11 points just has to be correct for me. And it also lowers the victory point ceiling available to others. Um, I need to build a trading post and two dwellings. Those two dwellings might be F8, E8 in order to save workers, uh, really saving priests so that I can be as flexible as I want to be on the priest situation. Bowser is feeding super free leech instead of me. Boo, boo. I am your friend. Not I7, I6. Uh, oh, I7, I6 saves even more workers. Sure. Uh, we could do I7, I6 because that's fun. I mean, it feeds Bowser more leech, but it probably doesn't matter at this point. I mean, Bowser's game's pretty good too, but... Uh, sorry, what am I doing? Oh, I can build a trading post though. Uh, trading post, trading post, trading post. Uh, remember that whole thing where we just were yelling at giving super free leech? Uh... Uh... Uh, looks like I'm giving super free leech. <laughs> uh, I can't avoid, I can't avoid giving super Zardy free leech here. I could, if I guess, if I upgrade here. Oh, weird. Uh, okay. How much do I want to build this dwelling on I7 and upgrade it in order to not give super free power? Uh, uh, the answer is kind of, right? Uh, Bowser can't build a trading post at the moment. Bowser can't build a dwelling at the moment. Yeah, Bowser's definitely less of a threat. So let's just slowly head over here and uh we'll yeah, we'll we'll give Bowser some leech. I mean the bigger issue is Bowser might want all this leech. Citation needed, nice, yeah. Um Yeah. <laughs> so no Uh, Bowser has quite a few priests. Bowser sending priests to fire here looks kind of annoying, actually. Like, Bowser can spend three priests to win fire, and I don't think Halai responds. Oh, well, Halai can always respond fire, too. Oh, that's awkward. Uh, but Bowser is going for the fire line. That makes sense. Uh, you didn't notice the dam and thought BGA was afraid of communism? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it is always, it is always funny what BGA flags, and, uh, like, admittedly, BGA flagging communism seems, seems like a thing they might do. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Super Zardy's getting more powered offer to him, it's fine. Halai says, oh no, the halflings deny the leech themselves. Now you can't convert. Oh, did Halai mess up here? Oh, Halai, yeah, Halai declined doing conversions. So I think he's done. Oh, and he's about, he is gonna, he is gonna probably temple for fire too. Yeah, I'm not sure he can. Halai might need that resource. That's unfortunately, but we'll see. Whatever. Do, 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 do. Uh, all right. Who's actually winning this game? Um, is it us? Is it giants? Is it witches? I don't really know. 
I kind of did point calcs earlier, but doing them again is annoying. It's just definitely not Halai. I'm, I'm very much on Halai has the fewest points. He has no network. He has no pass tile. He has good cults, which is great. But yeah, Halai is clearly out of it. Halai is like very far behind. Um, he does get fire two here and can form a town. So that's fun. But yeah. Yeah, I don't think Halai... I do think Halai lost... It does look like Halai lost a coin here, and that coin might matter, so that's also unfortunate. Uh, but uh, to be fair, the interface warns you that you're going to switch to another player's decision and that you can't undo anymore, and that you... that you uh, you declined doing conversions. Like, I don't totally know. I guess he is. he's trying to undo and refresh here. I agree. Sometimes it still lets you, so hopefully he can, but... I have no, oh wait, yep, no, right here it is. Does conversions. Or he did just a second ago. I have no idea. Maybe it's not in time. It is unfortunate. I'm not sure. That coin does look like a difference. Yeah, I agree. The coin might be a difference. I, I do feel for him. I think it's fourth regardless, so like it probably doesn't matter that much. But yeah, it is always tough to like. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he I think he messed up, but yeah, I don't think he can go far enough back, but um, again, I, I the only thing I will say is that, it, it again, you literally have to click the button. So, I mean, I feel bad, but also, like, the interface does try to warn you about this. And unforced error is a bit of a... Yeah, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, for sure, to make an error here, but... And Halai, Halai does understand he's last anyways here, so yeah. Um, it does look like he cost himself a coin, I guess, after all this. It doesn't look like he can figure it out. But he does go fire two and locks up the fire cult. So that's welcome, because again, him having most of the cult points is great. means other players have less cult points, and I am here for that. Super is building his free dwellings, gonna tie me on network, possibly still just beat me on network in a crate. No, there's no way he can temple trade. Yeah, no, okay, there's no way that happens, but he is gonna tie me on network, which is slightly unfortunate. Uh, I'm building this dwelling, or does giving Bowser Leech give him options? Not yet, so that's fine. This doesn't cause any immediate problem. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is a, this is a really cool looking game. Um, I would not be too sad if this is like loosely what happens in my F2O game tomorrow, where a bunch of people do a lot of fun things and nobody got kicked too tremendously hard. I mean, I guess Halai got kicked pretty bad by this whole witches thing, but man, whatever. Yeah, this is it, whatever. Lakes is a tricky map because like almost inevitably somebody gets cut off. Probably if you were Halai, you'd be incredibly salty. I'm not sure I'd be incredibly salty because like I feel like some people noticed this during like we were talking like I don't think it's that insane to have like not foreseen that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like you, you guys said during bidding, like people were talking about during bidding that mermaids might need to start down some of these hexes to better protect them, and doesn't actually have to start e four in this matchup necessarily. Um, and like, but I agree. Like, it does suck to have your game like kind of killed very early. But am I planning on streaming my own games with no chat? No, 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 no. Yeah, people just go to the mainstream. I don't, I don't stream stuff during F two O. Chris wants us on camera anyhow. Uh, and if I'm really folk like. If I'm in a tournament game, I mostly want to be really focused. Like, admittedly, during those Agricola mini tournaments, I streamed myself still, but it's kind of a different level still, even those, in my opinion. I don't know. For Terra Mystic, it's going to be a lot better if I can be fully focused. If I'm playing in a tournament tomorrow, like, this last round, I would have actually known if I needed that leech for two for one. Like, I would have, I would have, I would have had my pen and paper. Like, I would have calced it. I'll do that tomorrow. I don't like being that much of a tryhard normally because I just don't care. But for the F2O game, I'll put in that level of effort. Yeah, the mainstream's super fun. Like, that's also just what. Like, they have great casters. There's lots of chat. Like, people should be there instead of trying to, like, 
peer into my insights. The other final thing, admittedly, too, is, like, streaming yourself during a tournament's a little annoying. Like, I don't think any of the competitors would try to cheat and, like, get an edge or anything, but you always have to worry about that type of stuff, too. Like, it's just not worth any of that. Uh, what did Bowser do? Uh, Bowser is the one I need to continue to watch about. Bowser sent a priest to the Earth track. That makes enough sense. Giving Bowser a leech still does not give him the ability to make a trading post, and that's mostly what we care about. So this is fine. I want to continue to wait as long as possible to see what I should do with all my priests, whether I should just put them in the ground, whether I should put them to cult tracks, whether I should advance ship, um, which maybe... Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. But you're in a million meetings tomorrow, unfortunately, but you'll definitely try to stop by. Yeah, I mean, if you can't, you can't, right? Like, whatever. But the F2O streams are really well done. They're good stuff, so. Advanced ship can't possibly correct. Well, I mean, I have to build a dwelling. But after I build a dwelling, the point is, like, if I get a, f if I get a free leech, and then I actually send a priest to Earth, advanced ship has to be kind of reasonable after that. Like, I have to build a dwelling. Build the dwelling. So I have two coins. If I send priest to earth, I have another coin. If I ever actually get this free leech, I have the fourth coin to advance ship. Like, that has to be an efficient sequence at that point. Like, now, if I was possibly talking about converting priests into coins to advance ship, well, yeah, then I should just dig or keep using them on the cults, but... It is a little awkward looking here. Like, Super's going to take a priest town. Yeah, Super's going to take a priest town. Super has enough to build these two dwellings and take a priest town. So Super hits 98, 107, passes 115. It's pretty good. Bowser just locks out the Earth track. Yep, good play. I could try to catch up on fire as well. Uh, I don't need to take points away from Bowser, I'm pretty sure, right? Bowser, Bowser at this point is going to pass and be at 101. He has six point on network is 107, 115, 119, 121, 125. I mean, 125 is not a problem. So yeah, it, it really is just super. So I, I guess super, it's just like, yeah, I don't know. Two priests and fire gets us a point and two power. Yeah, maybe. Priests are just fancy workers, which are just fancy coins. Uh, they could be. We'll see. Fancy workers are just fancy victory points. Send priest to air is certainly better. Yeah, making sure I beat super has to be more important. Like any swing there is good. I mean, super will probably respond priest to, to air as well, but... If I have to send two priests to air, I think it's just fine. I mean, also just digging is fine, right? Like, I don't know. I build a dwelling, takes me to 109. I pass him at 117. God, I mean, it's it's a fairly close game between me and Super, but I, I think I have it, right? I have slightly better cult points than Super. Like, it should be fine. I have slightly more points and I have slightly more cult points. I, I think this is just a win for me. Uh, can I build next to Bowser, by the way? Building next to Bowser lets him accept this leech, which does nothing. Okay. Uh, oh, except I don't really want to do this yet in case I get a free leech. Although, yeah, who's giving me a free leech at this point, right? Nobody's going to give me a free leech. Just joined. Is the Witch's Stronghold not good enough to build six free dwellings? Uh, so yeah, it's actually really interesting. The Witches are a really flexible faction. The Stronghold is certainly pretty good, but it's not mandatory. It's a, it's really it's really like a very nicely balanced building in terms of like it has its uses and it's quite good, especially on like certain maps where the like ability to fly around and helps you. But it's it's not yeah like remarkably six free dwellings is like just about correct like you can invest your resources in such good ways uh that it doesn't always matter halai looks like he's at 125 that's cool here to stream snipe well welcome super 
Well, basically, I'm talking about what happens if I send a priest to air. And I think the answer is that you just respond with a priest to air. But I think I don't care. I think forcing you to fight me is correct. So that's uh, that's what we're, our big discussion is. So welcome. Um, Bowser could take a priest action if we give him the leech. Maybe that's good enough for him. I doubt it. But yeah, the point is actually I don't need to give him the leech yet. Bowser will just pass here. And then I can give him the leech. I also don't really want to do the coin conversions yet. Oh, wow. Bowser does take the priest. Uh, interesting. What? That's unexpected. Yeah, that priest looks like he's throwing away a victory point. Like he had. I don't I don't get that. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's using it preemptively so that I don't fight him on fire, but I'm not worried about Bowser. Bowser's not beating me. He's just defending fire. Fair enough. I was never actually going up fire, I don't think. I would much more happily chase mermaids, I think, for points, but whatever. He, Yeah, he doesn't... It's true. He's. It's fair. I'm doing the exact calc. Like, I've done calcs here, and maybe he thinks he is fighting me, but I'm, I'm totally on the fight super train. Um... Fighting super train is uh, what matters here. But now I can build. I could build next to Bowser. But two priests to fire is two points, even if I ignore him. Building F four would have given us a free power. Oh yeah, I could have built F four because he was coming, and then the free. That's that's a good call, George Troy. Well, that's true. I could have got that free power, and uh, that free power is actually pretty dang good here. But I don't get the free power, so whatever, it's fine. We're just going to abandon it. It's not coming. Nobody else is building anything next to us. Um, building next to Bowser doesn't bother me. If he accepts, it's fine. Uh, these priests are going to be fighting Super Zardy and or they're just digs and they're straight up points. Straight up points is fine. Actually, Halai, never mind. I can send priests. I can still send priests to... I can still send uh, priests to Earth here. Halai did not... Def like, Halai... What did Halai do with his last priest? Just up shipped? Yeah, so I send a priest to Earth. Um, I can send priests into the ground. Like, it doesn't... I, I, I Again, I'm pretty sure at this point of... Oh, wait, no, Halai got a priest town. Duh, duh. Halai has a priest town. So I, I have to continue to wait, actually. Sending priests to Earth isn't needed yet. Oh, Halai... No, oh, Halai does send... Never mind. Halai, Halai uses his priest to advance ship one more time. Okay, so Halai is done. Super tied me here. So... The play might be advanced ships still, guys. I can send priest to earth, priest to air, uh, get some cult points, and then still advance ship. Uh, is actually probably the best line here for my three priests. I think that almost has to be what I'm doing. Um, like, Halai beats Bowser either way. Oh, well, that's interesting. Good for Halai beating Bowser here. That's yeah, that's actually. Like, that is fairly impressive, especially without a pass tile. Are you sure he beat Bowser? I guess probably. Bowser's cults are significantly worse. Like, Halai really sucked up a lot of the cult points, so even the six network for Bowser is probably not enough here. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. And I do think I have super regardless here, right? Like, super... Oh, super passes for four less than I do, too. Yeah, never mind. I'm definitely... I'm definitely won this game. Um... Because me and Giants have tied. I have slightly better cults. I have slightly better pass. I have slightly better direct points. So yeah, I'm going to win this by like maybe 10 or something. Um, we send a priest to air. Uh, a little conversion. Our turn again. Now we do convert. And we do hit this ship advance anyhow. So C5 turned out to not actually be important. But didn't know that earlier in the round. So who cares? We pass. And uh, indeed, half lanes are just stupidly good at making points. We still hit 121 more than anybody else. Um, good times. Good times. Uh, yeah, good game, everyone. Going to be just a little over uh, 140. The correct bid was, in fact, just take half lanes. Yep, it was still half lanes, it turns out. Yeah. Bowser passed for eight, so that evens out the call differences. Bowser had already passed at that point, Godzo, so the score was already there. Uh, flip, 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 go the scores. <laughs> yep, here they come. But, um, yeah, that was a really interesting game, and it turns out, yeah, apparently just bid brown on this map. I mean, 
I got. I admit, I also am just a big fan of having the faction that just yeah, kind of has a robust game, right? Like no color neighbor. Like I, 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 I don't know. This was good, but you draft factions with bids. Oh yeah, hey, welcome to the stream. Uh, you must. Yeah, there's a lot of Terra Mystica streamers, but so on Board Game Arena, we draft factions and we bid on them. Um, so everybody like puts in a faction they want in a seat position, and then we bid victory points to get them. So I paid like 13, or like I bid like 13, I paid like 17 points to have halflings. Uh, the person that played giants, I think got them for free. Mermaids paid like two points and witches paid like four. So I paid like a lot, like compared to my opponents. We'll look up this, we'll look up the exact math here in a sec, but I paid quite a bit for the halflings position. And yeah, I actually won by 12. Oh, super barely beat Halai. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting game. I wonder if the Sanctuary was still better for Super, but it was really hard to calc, and, like, Super said that he's recovering from, I think, a booster shot or something, so. It's hard to not think we way overvalued Giants game. Uh, yeah, it does kind of look like I was too worried about Giants at the end, but uh, also, anybody who's watched me stream long enough should know that this is also a classic refrain of r me constantly worried that I'm going to lose the game and then finding out, oh, wait, I was fairly comfortable. Um... I'm never comfortable, though. That's the point. I'm never comfortable. Uh, what number of points do you start on before bids? Uh, you start uh, you start at 30, and then, yeah, you bid. So Giants went for 30. I paid 17 points. So I, got, I started at 13 points with Halflings. So I was 17 behind Giants at the start and behind these. Like, uh, I had a big victory point edge to overcome, and uh, it did, did overcome. Uh, if I hadn't started at one, I actually still would have won. Oh, if I'd started at one, one, if I bid down to one VP. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Some of the breaks weren't for Seaball. Although I got no coins power actions this game, right? I mean, that's kind of nuts. Although I got two early double digs. Apparently early double digs are very good. But yeah, no coins power actions. Giants got four of them. But just two early spades actions was all the spades I needed to get halflings rolling. Um... Yeah, but it, yeah, the leech though, like th these leech numbers are a little low compared to like fjords, but forty-seven is high just regardless. That's pretty sweet. But, yeah, I didn't gain much power, so I, I used all my early power to just get double digs out. But I hit the scoring tiles pretty well. Favor tiles were great. I mean, those those two mid-game favor tiles were really good. My past tiles I hit twice. Just got solid town points, solid area, like just yeah, everything. And then of course, yeah, advancing all the tracks. I just made the most points. You just make points everywhere. Halflings are good at that, I guess. I mean, all the point favors being there were nice for me, so there's there. We did open with a four-point action. Uh, yeah, there's that, too. Uh, if you bid down to one, you can't charge power. Yes, that is a bit issue, too. Uh, what's funny is almost never the case with Agricola. You always seem to have a pretty good idea of my wins. Oh, yeah, Agricola is way more... Uh, Agricola is way easier for me to, like, have a really good sense of. Um... Partly because, also, I've still been playing too many terrible players in Agricola, though, too. Like, a lot of my Agricola games are still against opponents that are, like, much worse. Um, the Agricola community on BJ is still, like, very much learning. Terra Mystica has a much more, like, mature community of, like, very strong players. Like, all these players are experts and still put together, like, very reasonable game plans. Um, nobody was doing things that were just, like, obviously zany or wrong. Whereas Agricola, even the, like, 300s and 400s right now, right, are still very iffy. How many tables of, like, 500s level of Agricola have you seen me at? If I was at all tables of experts, I'd be worried a lot more often in my Agricola games. Um, because, yeah, it's it's it would be a lot harder for me to judge what's happening. But usually my Agricola games thus far, it's a lot easier, so... 
Bowser down to 489. Yeah, he's on a bit of a rough run. It, it's happened. I've dipped below 500 at times in my past, too. Like, it is kind of crazy, but it's fine. Um, but yeah. Was there a spade round this game? No, that's part of the nonsense of half -lane. Like, I do think half lanes are pretty remarkable, and, like, they do just make points. Uh, I think Deep Finesse is on to a little something. Like, I, I think I need to also learn to just throw in half lanes a little more, because I, I do think people just. I do oftentimes, too, just ignore the fact, like, half leads are, like, you basically get 20 bonus points for playing half leads, right? Like, you're going to advance digs at some point in the game for pretty cheap. So that's 12 points you get because of uh, your advanced digs. And then also the number of digs. Like, I dug nine times this game. Only nine spades, admittedly, but that's still just nine points nobody else is getting. So... You know, this is 21 points that I get that, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, it's not a great faction ability, but it's pretty good. And then if Brown's a good color and you're going to get early leech and then there's, yeah, just enough pass tiles and enough ways to make points. Like this is only a two town game even. So Brown is just broken in general. Yeah. I mean, we've also learned that. So I guess we learned all that. You have a question on Agricola. You've seen a couple people rated like 500, but they only play the game without cards. What's up with that? Um... Some people on BGA like certain formats, so they're allowed to play that way if they like, but the rest of the Agricola community will ignore them. Um, some people on BGA get too addicted to just getting their rating really high, and so you'll find some two-player specialists that only prey upon really low-ranked players that they know they're going to beat. Happens in Terra Mystica too. It's a little annoying. That's why the arena format is very nice, because everybody has to play the same format. So... I wouldn't take normal ELO ratings with too, too much seriousness because there definitely are some jokers that, like, are playing a completely different game. Um, like, if we go look at the top of the TM t boards at the moment, like, the top of the Terra Mystica leaderboards are going to have a bunch of names that are playing, like, in the general four-player milieu of other experts, such as Zevok and Deep Finesse. Wow, Zevok's up to 746. Damn, good for him. It's crazy. Uh, but... Like, Zevok, Deep Finesse, Sprockets, Barnawal, Matt the Lesser, Weber, like, these are great players that, like, play the same things. Good story is a two-player specialist. I'm sure he's great at two-player, but... I, longer in particular. He's, he's also probably pretty good at whatever he plays, but it's not, like, what the rest of us are playing, so... But he gets a really high elo, and he gets a badge for it, so cool. But... Uh, interesting that factions that make their own points are pretty good, even when there are a lot of points on tiles. Generic thinking. Yeah, that's interesting. Was this a reading game? It was not. Not an arena game. I was doing a practice for the Fire 2 Open tournament tomorrow. For all of those who don't know, Fire 2 Open broadcasts at uh, twitch.tv slash fire 2 tournaments. The 2 being spelled out. T-W-O, not, uh, not otherwise. Uh, they're broadcasting a game tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central time. Uh, I'm playing in that. They'll have casters. They have a whole schedule for the next month or so. Games are on Wednesdays and Saturdays. It's a really cool tournament. A lot of high-level Terra Mystica. The chat's really awesome. People should definitely check it out. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll have a good game in there tomorrow. We'll see. Apparently the lesson is just like throw in half leads and bid on them. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. You've never seen an ELO over 800 on any game on BGA? Oh, there are some games where people have, like, 1,200 ELO on BGA. Not a lot, but yeah. Uh, we shouldn't read that much into half leads as a faction based off this game. It had a lot more to be the best position on the color wheel and played a good economic game. I agree strongly with the range there as well. Um, I mean, like, look, a lot of things did go well for me, right? I got two double dig actions and got tons of dwellings out. As Zevok said at that time, like, that often kind of leads to a runaway win. If none of the other factions can efficiently put out dwellings because I get all the early double dig actions, that can be a big problem. And that kind of was a big problem for witches and mermaids, right? They, they just couldn't set up a worker economy. Um, and their whole economy is, like, just a little tough. Their expansion's tough. They can't compete on network. Giants manufacture their own spades. They had a pretty decent game, too. But, yeah, I just, you know, like, I just had too much of that going early. Um, and then being able to take Earth 1 and Water 1 in round 3 is pretty zany, too. Like, that was pretty fortunate, so. Uh, but, yeah, Cultists are so good. Halflings are pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Brown is pretty good. Is really there, but, yeah. Uh, happens elsewhere, too. Have a reasonably high TM rating on BJ, but you pretty much only play turn-laced. But against your friends, you'd be wrecked by experts. Yeah, again, there's... 
There's a lot of things. Many top players play half leads more than cultists, blah, blah, blah. Where can you find more BGA streamers? You just found this one. Not actually that big fan of Terra Mystica. You prefer Agricola. Well, Twitch noob. Uh, okay, yeah. So, um, there are a lot of good streamers that you can follow. Um, first off, yeah, you can learn to follow the board games category. And you can find a lot of people that way. Um, I do stream a decent amount of Terra Mystic at the moment, so that's great. Um, you want to follow... I'm going to type a bunch out for you. Um, if you are looking for more Agricola streamers on BGA, um, you should definitely follow Lumen. He streams on a pretty set schedule, often on BJ. Econ Sean has been streaming a ton. He probably is streaming as we speak. Indeed, people say that. We'll go raid him in a sec. Um, uh, gosh, who else have we had been streaming? Deranged does some Agricola, some uh, Terra Mystica. Uh, Norden Watch has been streaming some Agricola lately. Uh, Nerd Cube streams... Agricola very infrequently at the moment, but has uh, been streaming. Uh, he's very good at Terra Mystica. Uh, uh, the Terra Mystica community has quite a few streamers also, if you're interested in getting more into Terra Mystica. But yeah, uh, it's not going well. Yeah, no, watching Econ Shot today has been hilarious, actually. Uh, anyhow, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see you around more. Uh, I do Agricola just whenever I feel like it, so that's a bit of a problem. I do have a Discord where I drop stream announcements. Uh, otherwise, you can just get your announcements through Twitch. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of like really cool Agricola streamers. As for other BGA streamers, uh, we got a raid earlier from Scrappy Kid. He was apparently playing Arnak. I'm not as familiar with what other people are streaming on BGA, uh, but I think there's literally a forum thread for that also that you can find. Uh, yeah, this forum thread. Uh, under the forums, there's uh, share your board game streams. There's only 14 posts, but there are people that uh, do post here with what they're streaming, but apparently not a lot. So maybe that's not a great avenue. Um, so yeah, uh, you prefer Gaia Project over Terra Mystica. Uh, Babic has been streaming some Gaia Project. I'm sure there'll probably be a few other. Uh, yeah, play Agricola streams Agricola and Marushka. Yeah, I actually don't... I don't know if I have their Twitches memorized. Play Agricola. Yeah, well, okay, let's have Twitch let's have Twitch Inception for a moment, everybody. Let's look at this. This is gonna be exciting. Twitch Inception. Boom. I am streaming. Yeah. Was this the channels I follow? Okay, Norton Watch is a chat yeah, uh, Agricola streamer, Econ Sean streams Agricola. Babak 49 streams some Gaia project. Matt the Lesser is mostly streaming Terra Mystica, but he's a very good Agricola player too. So uh, Deranged streams a bit of both. Up Your Play, um, he streams some Great Western. He streams some Arnak. He's just like a more generic BGA streamer. So that's that's a good one. Nerd Cube again. Oh, Catchy Slim streams some Agricola very infrequently too at the moment, but that's pretty good. Weber's Terra Mystica. Uh, DJ Parson is like the preeminent through the ages streamer on the app. That's pretty good. Marushka streams while he plays some BGA. Gray used to stream some B or some Agricola. He's playing more, but I'm not sure you'll find him. Fire two tournaments is the great, uh, Terra Mystica stream. Zorus, uh, used to stream a lot of Terra Mystica. It's been more Gaia, which I think is what the chat's telling. So yeah, Zorus, Zorus is an excellent, an excellent streamer. Very good, uh, for Gaia project. And then, yeah, Play Agricola streams Agricola, Lumen streams Agricola, Montu, I have no idea if he actually streams anywhere, or he probably does. He streams on Agricola, but I think he mostly plays on Play Agricola, not on BGA, so that probably is not going to help, but, uh, all right, we will be done, wow, 43 for Econ Sean, and I was up to, like, 50 during the middle of my stream, that's crazy. That's awesome that some of these communities are getting that growing, too, that's great. Uh, you enjoy watching Scrappy Kid? I should watch some Scrappy Kid, then, I, okay, I gotta, all right, Scrappy Kid raided me, let's... Let's also go find a Scrappy Kid, apparently. I should follow this guy. Scrappy Kid. Cool. Follow him. We'll see what he does in the future. Sounds good. Um, sweet. Uh, anyhow. 
He was in Econ Sean's last game. Mod 2 streams a lot of Agricola. Okay, cool. Scrappy Kid's a great watch. Oh, awesome. That's cool here. I like that. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Deranged. It's kind of interesting that I've won my like last three to four TM games to start not playing a lot and versus strong competition. Maybe there's something to the idea of recharging your batteries a little and playing with somewhat fresh eyes. Oh, they're def. So that is also very true. The fact that I've taken a big, like, kind of step back and a break from Terramistic is kind of great. Like, you, you, you go back a little bit to more fundamentals when you, like, pop back to a board game after a while. And also, like you say, just kind of recharge your batteries. Like, as you can tell, even, like, while I'm playing a game, like, I think I'm just also, like, in Agricola currently, sometimes I get a lot more, like, salty or jaded about things. Whereas Terra Mystica, it just feels like a lot more refreshing again because it's sort of like returning to a game of like, oh yeah, I do love this game and it's fun and we're having good things and oh, things might happen, but that's kind of life. Uh, whereas Agricola, I'm still a little bit of a tryhard at the moment or like I've been playing a lot. And so yeah, like taking a break from games is really good. Uh, the fact that I have kind of taken a break from Terra Mystica has been nice, but like this stream was really fun. So I might do a little more Terra Mystica streaming this arena season. Uh, although random map is certainly going to throw me for a loop, but God, putting me back on some fire and ice and also fjords without landscapes. I, I'm not as much of a landscape fan as a lot of you might know. So it'd be fun to mix in some more Terra Mystica streams again, this upcoming. So might happen. We got some feast for Odin, uh, desires at the moment too. And I do kind of still want to compete in this Agricola season. Uh, so I'm probably not taking an Agricola break yet, but yeah, I do think breaks are good in board games. I think breaks are good in a lot of your hobbies in life. Um, I think you could get too focused and stuff and yeah, just kind of stepping back and recharging, especially if you're not having as much fun. Like it's a little tricky. Like I've definitely in some board games just became a little too try hard where I care only about the results and I'm not having as much fun just playing the games. And so yeah, that's often also when you know you need to take a step back. Like if the games are starting to not become fun and you're starting to not like enjoy your hobby because you're trying too hard, like that's yeah, all that's bad too. So breaks are good everywhere indeed. Uh, you prefer the Agricola streams over Terra Mystica, but only because you think Agricola games are wilder. Agricola is kind of wilder. There's definitely some like more interesting stuff, but <laughs> again, I don't hit 50 some viewers on my Agricola streams. Uh, I've had a couple of Agricola streams that occasionally hit like 30 and 40, but I will admit the Terra Mystica streams, there is also just more of an audience for that stuff, which is which is cool. It's great. Like there should be. Like Terra Mystica is also an excellent game, but. That's what I mean. Terra Mystica has built such an excellent community around BGA. I'm hoping Agricola continues to grow. It seems like it is, which is great, because I think it's also a game deserving of that. But it's, it is, the Terra Mystica community has a pretty special thing going on at the moment between the Fire 2 tournaments and just the general community and the streamers and everything. Like, there's a mature player base, a lot of strong players, a lot of advice, a lot of just, like, it's a really cool thing. Um... And it's not at all easy to make happen. And it's not all that easy to sustain necessarily either. So hopefully it will because it's a really cool thing. And I'm glad that I can just kind of pop back in when I'm ready. Um, we'll see what we can manage with Agricola on all that front. But um, how many viewers Gaia Project would get? Well, that's the trick. It's it's surprisingly hard to build these communities. I don't think Gaia Project would actually get more viewers. You'd have to build it. And even to then, I'm not sure Gaia Project will ever get the level of competitive community that Terra Mystica has. Um, a lot of people proclaim to prefer Gaia Project, but I'm not so clear that that sentiment is shared amongst the kind of competitive mega users of uh, these sites. We'll see. I could be wrong, but I would not be shocked if Terra Mystica continues to be more popular amongst uh, amongst a good segment of uh, like really kind of competitive players. Um, but yeah, who knows? Uh, there's fewer people streaming Terra Mystica now than Agricola, so the audience is split. Yeah, the Agricola streamers lately is crazy. Well, especially with Econ Sean. Like, I swear Econ Sean's only job is streaming Agricola lately, so... Oh, yeah. Gaia is very new on BGA, so yeah, building building things takes a while. Um, it, it We'll see what happens in the long run. Like, Gaia definitely can get a lot bigger, but it, exactly, Ghostly. Like, part of the problem is Gaia Project takes a lot longer to play. I think it's harder to analyze... Uh, I think it's harder for beginners to like get into it and level up. I think there's less strategy resources. So is there a future where Gaia Project is more popular? Sure. But I don't think it's anytime soon. Uh, I think it takes a long time to build these communities and get there. Uh, I think I think Terra Mystica, again, is in a very special place. Um, and I don't think it's at all easy to achieve. So we'll see, though. Uh, do do do.
the interface is even more insane. Yeah, I agree with that too. Watching Gaia Project lately just drives my eyeballs nuts. Like, I honestly haven't watched Gaia streams, uh, even though I find Babic and Zorus like you know pretty delightful to watch sometimes. Um, it's it's just I can't. <laughs> I just can't do it. <laughs> I'll watch play of Gurkula streams before I watch Gaia Project streams. It's just kind of nutty. So. Uh, yeah, no, also, Age, I completely agree. I, I, I don't think Gaia Project is the better game. I think Terra Mystica is the better game. I, uh, just, uh, I, I, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get slightly sidetracked and continue talking way too long on this VOD, apparently, but, um, I completely agree. Uh, the Board Game Geek, like, general consensus and, right, and the overall rankings is now that Gaia Project's a slightly better game and all these players are like, ooh, the tweaks are good. Evolution has to be good. No, I don't I don't think so. Um, I think there's still a place for, like, streamlining and stuff, and I think Gaia Project is just a little overwrought. Like, it's good, but Terra Mystica hits a level of, like, flow that I think is just easier and more smooth all the time, and I think Gaia Project is just harder to get in that level. Um, now, some people certainly do, and they love it, and many people will prefer it, and that's great. Um, but yeah, I I also would agree with you. I I I think I think Gaia Project's just a little too, little too much. I I also have other problems with Gaia Project, admittedly. So whatever. But do I play with any of the expansions? Well, yeah. So Terra Mystica, if you're playing on Board Game Arena, we are playing with the extra town tiles. Those are kind of necessary, in my opinion. Uh, we also play with variable turn order. That's obviously necessary. Um, you can play with the fire and ice stuff if you want. Uh, I don't generally because I do think just like the base game is really good. But you do need variable turn order and you need the extra town tiles. Um, so those are usually on. Uh, people do often play with the landscapes also. Um, the landscapes mini expansion is kind of cool. It certainly shifts up the balance. It makes things like Fakir's a lot more playable, which is nice. But it also does some things that I don't love. I slightly prefer playing without it. But have I read the book Euro Games? I have not, but I probably would enjoy it. Uh, you wish cults gave more interesting bonuses than just power. I do. I'm totally on board with the cults being changed up a little bit. But I think the Gaia Project tech tracks are not the solution. Um, I don't actually like the tech tracks in Gaia Project. I think it's a downgrade compared to the cult tracks, to be completely honest. Um, and Age 8 is also partly... <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> the complexity in Gaia Project is pretty absurd. The other thing in Gaia Project is I still think I can confound quite a few average players with like examples of like... Can I form a federation this way? What is my legal federation here? How can I drop satellite? Like, the federation rules are also, like, pretty nutty in terms of, like, how you can drop your satellites and, like, what's allowed and what's not. And, like, oh, yeah, it's it's just gross. Uh, most of the games surveyed professed to value interaction a lot and not complexity but it seems like in the decade since game design has headed more towards complexity and less interaction yeah completely agreed ranged i like that's the major i think prevailing trend of euro games lately and i think that's awful like, like it's gross but i could be the curmudgeon that continues to sit and mostly enjoy games that uh yeah hit a level of smoothness and flow and have great interaction and uh, i will continue to do that that's fine everybody else can do what they like you feel like there's less satisfaction from playing the cults than there could be. Yeah, I'm not saying that the cults can't be reworked. Um, the tech tree, though, is... I, I, I don't quite want a tech tree. I don't want everybody's shipping put onto a track. I don't... Like, it feels like everybody has to worry about shipping advances then, right? Like, everybody has to go up this track. Everybody has to do this. I don't like that the tracks then become... There's one winner of the track, but then everybody else can get as many points as they want. Like it's, I, I, I really like the cult tracks. Like every position matters, every fight matters. Like I don't, whatever. I'm blabbing on way too much, and I actually need to move on to other things. This stream has been plenty long as is at two and a half hours. So, as is, the relative scoring is great. Exactly. That's that's basically where I'm at. But anyhow, uh, I've talked a lot. It's been great. But yes, I, I really should head off. Obviously, I love. I could keep talking, but we'll have an F2O game tomorrow. That'll be great. Uh, I will probably be streaming again on like Thursday or something. I want to do some more Feast for Odin streams lately. I want to get into the new Agricola season. I want to, uh, 
I want to do some more Terra Mystica streaming again. So hopefully we'll get all of that figured out. We'll see. Anyhow, thanks all. Thanks for the, uh, yeah, thanks for the other stuff. We are going to go raid Econ Sean and see how he's doing. I assume he's still playing Agricola. So those that want to go watch uh, pretty fun Agricola streamer, a lot of you probably are in another tab anyhow, but uh, we're going to head off and go bug Econ Sean and see how his uh, how his run to Elite in Terra Mystica is, or not Terra Mystica, in Agricola is going. Uh, thanks all for hanging out so much, though. This was a really good game. Uh, see you all around. Later. The raid.